Game four of this eight-game homestand here for the Wittenberg Tigers as they are home for the first night game and the first evening game of the season at Carlton-Davidson Stadium as the Wittenberg Tigers will be hosting the Cedarville Yellow Jackets. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Tigers Sports Network. Jackson Lightcap alongside my colleague Dylan Jackson. Big game and a big opportunity for the Tigers to get back to 500. Oh, yeah, Tigers are back here at Carlton-Davidson as we talked about in the last broadcast. A lot of home games in a row coming up for the Tigers. We've got another one tomorrow that's on the schedule, weather permitting, of course. Uh, but today we're facing a D Division II team, the Cedarville Yellow Jackets. Last time the Tigers faced the Yellow Jackets was back in 2021. The Tigers faced off against the Yellow Jackets at Cedarville. And the Tigers got the victory, a 17-5 victory. So I know the Tigers are confident going into this. And then Cedarville's looking to get their revenge in this game as well. Cedarville coming into this one 6-24 and on the season as they have officially entered their midway mark of the year in a year that's been rather disappointing for the Yellow Jackets. The Yellow Jackets have gone over through some turnover of the recent years. Obviously, a pretty historic program in the past, right? About a decade ago, they were above 500 a lot, winning their conference and everything like that. Uh, a little bit of an adjustment period so far, but this is going to be a very good ball team. This is not a team that Wittenberg can take lightly. As for the Tigers, as we mentioned, they have a chance to get back to 500 coming up today. Let's take a look at your first look at the starting lineups. First for the visitor, Cedarville. Eli Henderson will lead things off. Alex Neff will hit second. Boston Torres will hit third. Kale Eblin Ebbins will hit uh, Fourth, Lucas Rotello will hit fifth. Brendan Cully will hit sixth. Caden Shook will hit seventh. Max Depker in the eighth spot. Seth Hale will bat ninth. As for the Tigers, Ben Seibert, they're mixing some things up a little bit. Ben Seibert in the leadoff spot. Luke Thomas bats second. Rocco Royer in the third hole. Xander Rodriguez, the true freshman in the cleanup. Alex Nemunitis will bat fifth. Connor O'Malley hits sixth. Matt Moore hits seventh. Parker Griskovich will hit eighth. And James McCauley in the ninth spot. Yes, different little look for the lineup right here, right? Moving LT to the two spot. He's been the one hitter for some years now, right? But getting LT a spot to get some RB opportunities with a guy like Ben Seibert in front of him, and then having a core group of O'Malley, Moore, and Grzegovic at your six, seven, eight, followed by McCulley flipping the order at nine. I like this lineup a lot. Should generate a good amount of runs. Pitching matchup for today. Luke Swanger will take the mound for the Cedarville Yellow Jackets. As for the Tigers, they turn to Nate Floyd. Nate Floyd, a junior pitcher. He, uh, he has been used out of the pen as of recently, right? But we're back in this midweek schedule. First midweek in a little bit for the Tigers. And you'll see Nate Floyd on the mound, and he's looking to have his best start of the year so far. Well, folks, first pitch coming up in about five or so minutes. But first, let's take you down to the field for the National Anthem. You're watching the Tigers Sports Network here, powered by TKDS Sports. Evening baseball, this game was originally scheduled for 6 o'clock this evening, but because of the impending rain that will be moving through Springfield right around the 9 o'clock hour, this game was moved up 45 minutes to 5.15. Cedarville coming up 
north just a little bit to Springfield to play the Wittenberg Tigers. Let's take a look at their lineup once more. Eli Henderson will lead things off. Alex Neff will bat second. Boston Torres will hit third. Kale Ebling will hit fourth. Lucas Rotello in the five spot. Brendan Colley, six. Caden Shook, seven. Max Depker, eight. And in the nine hole will be Seth Hale on the mound for the Wittenberg Tigers. They will turn it over to Nate Floyd. Yes, Nate Floyd. Nate Floyd, as we talked about, has had his most success this season out of the bullpen so far, right? But with another impending midweek game tomorrow and Mikey Eikhoff getting the start on Sunday, I would assume that Andrew Rust will be used tomorrow. And with that being said, Nate Floyd will get the start here, looking to improve on his start so far. His starts have not been up to his standard, and I know the Tigers are really looking to see Nate Floyd have a breakout performance here right now. Nate Floyd, an 11.47 ERA. He has pitched in six games this season. He started three of them. He's pitched combined 13 and a third of an inning. Opponents batting average against Nate Floyd, a 3.09. But just as you mentioned, those numbers a little inflated because of his success that he's had out of the bullpen. Yes, and that. And if you have watched Wittenberg last year, know anything about him, you know Nate Floyd had nine starts last year and 50 innings pitch. He had a 4.86 ERA, right? So he's a very good pitcher still, just looking to get into his groove going into the back half of this season now. And this will be a good test for him, see if he can get things rolling going into the rest of the season. Well, we are about ready to get things underway as the catcher, Parker Griskovich, guns down to second. It's a cloudy day, but it's a warm day in the mid-60s here in Springfield. The Champion City, nice breeze uh, pushing towards the left field wall as well. And here comes Eli Henderson to the batter's box. Henderson stands in, 337 batting average on the year. No home runs and 11 RBIs, a 476 on base percentage. Exactly what you want out of your leadoff man. Floyd looks in, gets a sign, only works out of the stretch. We'll come to the plate. First pitch is taken on the outside corner for strike one. We're underway. A couple quick things about Cedarville looking into this game. Cedarville is a team who will put bunts down. They'll, you'll see them bunt for a hit. You'll see them try to move runners over in any way they can to manufacture runs. Floyd, second pitch of the at-bat. Jams him a little bit. Goes the other way. Fly ball out to left field. And Rocco Royer is there to make the snag for out number one. Good job by Floyd being really efficient right there. Good fastball in the inner half. As you said, jammed him just a bit, and Rocco Roy is able to make that catch. Here comes Alex Neff to the batter's box. Neff, a 295 hitter on the season. He does have three home runs with 11 RBIs on the year, a 508 slugging percentage. So although the batting average, a little bit down from where Neff would want it to be, the slugging percentage certainly higher than what you would expect. Of course, definitely, obviously, as you see, Neff is sitting with a 942 OPS, which is on base plus slugging, and that's a very good number. So this is a very, very good hitter, and that's why he's in the two hole for this team. First pitch inside, next pitch, fastball, swung right through, and it's one and one. Good swing right there, good attack pitch right there from Nate Floyd to even the count back at one and one. One and one. Here's the pitch from Floyd. Comes to the plate, check swing, doesn't matter. He got the outside corner, and Floyd's up in the count. One ball, two strikes. Really good opening two batters so far for Floyd. Let's see if he can finish this batter out. One and two. Kicks, deals, delivers, popped up. Drifting back to the pitcher's mound. Nate Floyd comes off. Pitchers are athletes too. He'll make the grab for out number two. Let's take a look real quick at how the Tigers will line up on the defensive side. In the outfield, left field to right field, Rocco Royer in left, Ben Seibert in center, Connor O'Malley gets the start in right field. Across the infield, third to first, Alex Nemunitis, James McCauley, Luke Thomas, Xander Rodriguez. Behind the plate catching will be Parker Griskovich. Two down, and now here comes Torres to the plate. Breaking ball, left high, ball one. Torres is off to a fantastic start this season. His OPS is well over 1,000, hitting 414 on the young season. So this is probably the most dangerous hitter in this lineup. He also leads the team in RBIs with 27. Not an RBI opportunity here, but also has some power to knock it over the fence. Floyd leaves a fastball off the edge of the plate, and it's 2-0. Two, two balls, no strikes. Fastball just a tad downstairs, and it's 3-0. Floyd falling behind 3-0 and oh as Ebling stands in the on-deck circle. The 3-0 Floyd fastball just off the edge of the plate, and it's a four-pitch walk to extend the inning. 
And that'll bring up Kale Ebling to the batter's box. Floyd not missing by much there, but we've talked about in the past, right? Once you get those first two outs, you got to try to get that third one. That's really important, right? And a four-pitch walk is not what we want to see. But let's see if Floyd can get himself out of it and not let that runner on base come back to ha haunt him. Here comes Kale Ebling, a 257 batting average, four home runs on the year with 24 RBIs. Floyd throws a fastball right down Broadway for strike one. I mentioned the first evening game here at Carlton Davidson Stadium for the year. 0 and 1, pitch from Floyd, fastball again, got the bottom half of the zone, and it's 0 and 2. Very Tigers, they've played evening games. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But they have course. not played an evening game at home. Yep, and this is going to be interesting. Obviously, it's always different playing under the lights for the first time, so we'll see how they have adjusted that later throughout this game. Slider breaks outside the zone, and it's 1 and 2. Good pitch right there, 0-2. Only a swing and miss opportunity, or the guy takes, and he had a good take right there. Floyd comes set on the mound. We'll look back to first. He'll throw over there as Torres is back safely. Two down here in the top of the first. Runner on first. One ball, two strikes. Here on Ebling. Bouncer, dribbler, over to McCauley. He'll go to second base. It's a ground out to the shortstop. Unassisted and an efficient inning. Renate Floyd on the mound. We're heading to the home half of the first. 0-0 here on the Tigers Sports Network, powered by TKDS. Tiger is coming to the plate for the first time here in this one. Ben Seibert will lay things off. Luke Thomas in the two spot. Rocco Royer will hit third. Xander Rodriguez to clean up. Alex Nemunitis will hit fifth. Connor O'Malley will bat sixth. Matt Moore in the seventh spot. Parker Griskovich hits eighth. And James McCauley in the ninth spot. They will be met on the mound by Luke Swinger. Swinger, a 675 ERA, one and three on the year. He has pitched 26 and two thirds of an inning. And the opponent's batting average against Luke Swinger, 286. So the Tigers certainly have their work cut out for him today. Yeah, it's a very good pitcher here for the Yellow Jackets. Uh, graduate student, so a guy with a lot of experience on the mound right here. 6-7 um, ERA so far this season, right? But batting average is only at 286 against him, so it's not like he's getting hit around a whole lot. Um, I was talking to some of the guys early on. Matt Moore was talking about early on that this team leads their conference in walks and hit by pitches, right? So that seems to be a problem early on for this Yellow Jackets team is staying in the zone and commanding the strike zone. So let's see if the Tigers can have good at-bats and draw some walks and get some free passes and then take advantage of that later on. Well, Ben Seibert, about ready to get things going. He'll stand in to the batter's box. He had a terrific weekend. Hit that grand slam on Saturday against Worcester in the game one of that two-game doubleheader. Wintberg ended up losing that one 13-12. But they were down in that one 13-3 on the verge of a run roll in the bottom of the six until Seibert hit that grand slam to bring it back. A couple of other runs in that inning, including another home run that was hit as well by Alex Nemunitis. Gave the Tigers some life lately. He'll stand in, look at a breaking ball outside the zone for ball one. Pitch number two on the way, spikes it into the dirt, and it's 2-0 on Ben Seibert. As you said, Ben Seibert's off to a fantastic start. Has been a very good player for the Wittenberg Tigers for his three years here. And now he's hitting in the leadoff hole in this game with Luke Thomas following him. Cyber to 353 batting average on the air. Fastball waved at for strike one. 
Good spot right there. Upper and inner part of the zone. Good swing, though, by Ben. 2-0, -well, getting a good hack off. 2-1 here on Cybert comes to the plate. Another fastball that was left just off, just outside of the zone, and it's now 3-1 on the leadoff man, Ben Seibert. With Luke Thomas standing in the on-deck circle. Swanger to the plate, needing a strike. Found back, we've gone full. In Swanger's Cedarville career, he had his first season here in 2021. Uh, looked like he transferred, went to an NAIA school, and is back here. But he has 41 and two-thirds innings here at Cedarville, so as we said, a very experienced pitcher. Three and two, popped him up. Towards the right side of the infield, second baseman coming on, and Ebling will haul it in and will make the grab. Let's take a look at how the Yellow Jackets will line in the outfield. Seth Hale in left field. Center fielder will be Max Stepker, and then over in right, Lucas Rotello across the infield. Brayden Colley playing third. Eli Henderson, the shortstop, Ebling, the second baseman, and then the first baseman will be Boston Torres. Behind the plate will be Caden Shook. Here comes Thomas to the plate. Thomas will look at a breaking ball outside for ball one. Luke Thomas has only played in 13 games this year. As we've talked about in the past, he has dealt with a little bit of a groin injury early on this season. But when he's been in the lineup, he's been absolutely fantastic, hitting 404 on the year, OPS over 1,000. Thomas turns on this one, goes foul, and it's one and one. Foul ball right off the foot right there. He'll walk it off. The umpire will give him time. Go up to the pitcher, give him a ball. And Luke Thomas looks to be all right as he will go back in as the count is even at one and one. Luke Thomas certainly the one of the senior leaders of this team for the Tigers. Certainly the senior leader across a very young infield. Oh, yes, of course. He played a lot of center field last year, right? That's where he played majority of his of his season last year. But with the young infield back to second base as he's that leader in the infield. Thomas goes the other way, finds a gap in the left center field. It's down. For a one-out single. Luke and Thomas doing what he does, doing what he does, hitting a nice little backside single over the first over the shortstop's head. Leading things off with one out with Rocco Royer to follow. And here comes Rocco Royer. Rocco Royer, 395 batting average, two home runs, 16 RBIs on the season. Thomas does have some speed over at first base, but remember with that groin injury that's plagued him this season, his stolen base number certainly has been down. For sure, stolen base numbers are down. Stolen base numbers are down across the team so far this year. As Winbird only has eight stolen bases so far this season, um, just hasn't been their forte. They've haven't been in situations where like you're going to be stealing a lot of bases, and then having a guy like Luke Thomas, who is a primary base stealer, kind of not be able to steal bases as much as hinder that as well. First pitch inside for Royer answers it back with a foul ball, and it's one and one. But when we say like just not a lot of situations to steal this year, Tigers have been a lot of games in which. They scored a lot of runs, right, so it wasn't necessary to really try to run themselves out of an inning. So hitting has been good, but also sometimes they're behind. They're having to work their way back, and you don't want to run yourself out of an inning that way as well. Or check Thomas back to first once more. He'll dive back safely. One and one here on Rocco Royer, the left fielder. Here's the one one swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Swinger having some good success on that. Elevated fastball up in the zone. Got a couple swings and misses so far. One ball, two strikes. Swinger will go back to first base. Thomas back safely. Thomas does not have a huge lead over at first. It's a decent sized lead, but nothing too absurd. Inside fastball, and it evens count at two and two, looked at by Rocco Royer. Rocco doing a good job even this count right back up at 2-2. Two and two. Seen a couple pitches now. Let's see if he can get his timing down and get a nice little base hit. 2-2, two and two, the pitch fouled back and out of play. Another fastball. Swinger, he has certainly looked at the fastball and has gone to the fastball the majority of his pitches through the first three batters of the game. He's broken a couple of curveballs, but they have not found the strike zone. We've talked about they've struggled with free passes, right? So attacking in this early, early on in this first inning. Two and two, another fastball. Royer takes it the other way. It's over the right fielder's head. Thomas round second. Royer takes a turn from first. He'll have a double. They're going to hold Luke Thomas at third base. It is a 2-2 double, opposite field double off the bat. 
of Rocco Royer. He got that fastball in the outer third of the plate, able to take it to right field all the way up against the wall. And now Xander Rodriguez, the true freshman, will come to the batter's box with two runners in scoring position with just one away. Rocco, when you look at the numbers that he has, right, the power numbers as a team you're looking in, you're probably thinking that he's a big slugger that's going to be pull side. Rocco does such a good job taking the ball the other way as well, understanding his approach. And you see it right there hitting a double to the right side. And now Xander has a good opportunity here. First pitch to Rodriguez. Just a tad tardy as he'll... He put a good charge into that ball, but it was well foul. Rodriguez, the true freshman, 375 batting average, five home runs, 28 ribeyes on the season. Leads the team and walks as well. The true freshman has been uh, nothing short of uh, spectacular on the season. He's got another chance for something. Late again, line drive foul, and it's 0-2. Xander's been, as you said, has been very fun to watch, right? The, and I always talk about the most impressive thing, 21 walks to eight strikeouts in his freshman campaign so far. That's remarkable stuff. And that's how you have the numbers that he's had so far this season. Oh, and two to Rodriguez inside. Rodriguez will just back out of the way, and it's one and two. He is actually out of the top 10 players in the Wittenberg lineup in terms of at-bats. He is the only one outside of James McCulley that has more walks than strikeouts. So his approach has been fantastic so far this season as the Tigers are looking to creep back in. It was worse earlier this year, the walks to strikeout ratio, but the Tigers are doing a better job with their approach. But Xander has been leading the category in that, that regard. Rodriguez will watch a changeup go outside, and it's even now at 2-2. Two and two. two balls and two strikes. A pitch from Swinger. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup down in the zone. Got... Xander Rodriguez to swing right through it for the second out of the inning, and here comes Alex Nemunitis to the batter's box. Very good pitch right there. Obviously, the one thing you don't want there is a strikeout, and Swinger doing his job getting the strikeout right now. Alex has to get a base hit to score this score, these two runs, or maybe an error or something, right? But makes it makes Alex's job a lot harder and Swinger's job a lot easier. Nemunitis a 419 average, five home runs and 20 RBIs. A chance at a few more here. Looks at a fastball that got the inside corner for strike one. Alex is off to a fantastic start this season in his sophomore campaign with a slugging percentage in the 700s right now. A guy that you wouldn't expect out of him, right? But he is absolutely hitting the ball really hard, seeing it really well this season. Here's the 0-1. As he might just get another one if the win allows it to. Flying <laughs> back to the back of the wall, and it is gone. Alex Nemunitis put it a charge into that one. It looked like a routine fly ball, but the wind got a hold of it and carries it over the fence. Alex Nemunitis, his sixth home run of the season, and it's a three-run fly here in the bottom half of the first as the Tigers take a 3 nothing advantage. <laughs> it's just remarkable what Alex Nemunitis is doing this season. His sixth homer already. He is on a remarkable pace. He cannot hit a home run the rest of the year, and that's an un unbelievable power season. Um, has now Connor O'Malley come up, and there's a three runs right there for Wittenberg in the first inning. O'Malley stands into the box. Fastball inside for ball one. With how it came off the bat, it just looked like it was going to be a routine fly ball to the left fielder. That, that ball just kept carrying and carrying and carrying until it just was able to get over the fence. The Carlton Davidson Stadium specialty. We've talked about how the ball will fly here, right? And... Nemo has been putting a lot of barrels on balls, right? He got barrel under it. He was just under it, just a hair, but just enough barrel. And with the good weather, right, it's in the mid-60s today. The wind is blowing out a little bit, right? Did everything that it needed to do to get out of here. One and two is O'Malley will foul it back. O'Malley, another power threat. Only one home run on the year, but a nice slugging percentage as this one's dribbled over to first base and the side is retired. Damage is done. The Tigers, they get three off of a three-run big fly from Alex Nemunitis. They win the first inning. We're heading to the second. Tigers lead 3-0 over the Yellow Jackets.
Five, six, seven, do up here for the Yellow Jackets of Cedarville as Rotello will lay things off. Tigers, they get a three-run home run in the bottom of the first as they lead by a score now of three, nothing. Floyd back out on the mound, leaves a fastball on the way outside, and it's one and oh. Good job of the Tigers right there, winning that inning, getting those three runs. Good job by Nemunitis bringing in the three with the home run with two outs, right? Two out RBIs, we talked about those. Uh, back and out of play, and that'll even it up at one ball and one strike. Lucas Rotello, 289 batting average. He has one home run and 24 knocked in on the year, hitting this one in the five hole. Fastball outside, and it's two and one. Cedarville, again, we mentioned their struggles this season, six and 24. They're their first 30 games, game number 31 for the Yellow Jackets. Division II school. So Wittenberg playing up a division in this one. Wittenberg Division III NCAA. Cedarville number two, Division II NCAA. Two and two, the pitch from Floyd inside fastball, and we've gone full. Rotello is a very familiar face for this Cedarville team as he is a guy who has well over 600 at-bats in his career, has 219 hits in his career so far. So this is a guy who has seen a lot of baseball. Two and two. Jammed him, but was able to foul it off. We talk about Cedarville and Wittenberg. This can be, quote-unquote, a backyard rivalry. These two schools just 23 minutes away, 13 miles separating Cedarville University Carlton Davidson Stadium. Here's the 3 2 fastball line foul. We'll do it again. Oh, yeah. This is a team that Wittenberg is familiar with. We've scrimmaged them in the falls in the past. Uh, we have faced them, as we said, in 2021. And this is a team that it's always great to be able to have a, another school that's close to you, another good competitive team to play a good baseball game, whatever. 3 and 2, seventh pitch of the at bat, forthcoming. This one hit on a line. Yep, oh, on. what a play by come McCauley. On. McCauley comes up firing, uh, throws the first, but it's late. McCauley laid out for that one, made a terrific grab. But Rotello's speed able to beat out the throw, and it'll be a leadoff single for the Cedarville Yellow Jackets. What a great play right there by James McCauley. But you see why Rotello is a guy with now his 220th hit in his career, so congratulations. Uh, <laughs> That's just remarkable, right? But you see him moving down the line right there, even on a hard hit ground ball, right? Moving down and getting there just in time. Gonna bring up Brendan Colley to the plate. First pitch from Floyd, jammed him. Slow roller out to Thomas. Four, six, three, not in time. And the ball caught by Xander Rodriguez. Oh, it rolls call, all the way. He will call him out. The Gratello did not slide, right? So he did not slide in there. So they will call a runner's interference. So I believe both batters will be called out. As he's still standing on second base, the runner doesn't know yet. And now he's starting to walk back to first, but he does have an elbow guard. And he's he is out. out. Yep. He is out. So there will be a runner's interference there as Rotello did not slide, did not make an attempt to get out of the way. So it's going to be a runner's interference. So it does not matter that the ball got by Xander Rodriguez. It will go in the books as a double play. And now we have two down here in the top of the, the second. And here comes Shook. Yeah, it's just it was a tough one, right? It was hit softly. It was like a little in-betweener. Luke Thomas flipped the last second. So Rotella's trying to beat out the throw, right? But you still got to get down. You got to get down and slide or that's going to happen right there. And we get a free double play right there. You can break up a double play, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between trying to break up a double play and then, of course, just standing in the way for a runner's interference. Right, exactly. Here comes Shook to the batter's box. Shook, the catcher, will watch one in the dirt. One ball and two strikes now on Caden Shook as he's quickly behind. Max Stepker in the on-deck circle. Floyd. Only working from the stretch. Comes set, comes to the plate. Mm. Oh, what a slider. Swings right through it. Strike three, and the side is retired. Shook is down on strikes. It's the first strikeout for Floyd on the evening. 
We're heading to the bottom of the second. Tigers up, three zip. Bottom of the order coming up to the dish for the Tigers. Matt Moore, Parker Griskovich, and James McCulley all do up here. In the bottom of the second, Tigers lead 3 0. Matt Moore, 356 batting average. He's gone at deep two times this season. He's got 24 RBIs. Matt Moore has really been turning it on as of late. He had a 4 for 4 day the other day, had a home run in their last game. Let's see if Matt can continue to get th keep things rolling for him offensively. First pitch dropped by the catcher, Caden Shook, and will result in a ball, 1-0. The one thing for Matt so far this season that he could possibly improve on would be his ability to draw more walks, right? Only six walks and 90 at-bats for him so far. Um, he's a guy who can get deeper into counts. He's a good hitter, right? So if he can draw more walks, it'll help him. Because right now he's hitting 356, but his on-base percentage is under 400, right? So if he can boost that up, that'll only help the Tigers generate more offense and more runs. Second pitch of the at-bat, misses low, comes back with a fastball that gets the outer third of the plate. First strike one, and it's two and one here on the designated hitter, Matt Moore. Swinger, also a pitcher that only works out of the stretch, delivers a slider that bounced in the dirt, and it's three and one. You see almost in baseball in general, you see less and less guys going to the windup and just working out of the stretch as Matt Moore fouls that slider off right there. And Coach McGee makes a nice little play over there, showing back to his third base days. But uh, you see a lot of guys just going the stretch because it keeps them in line, right? It, it's easier to go there. Like, a lot of guys, when it comes to the lineup, are just doing it to, like, have a rhythm. But some guys have just taken that out of their arsenal completely. Three and two, fouled back and out of play. A great play by Brian McGee, the third base coach and the manager for the Tigers. Brings me back when I played in high school. We had these sheets that kept... We, we had to keep our own personal stats and defensive stats. It had putouts, airs, assists, everything. As here's the 3-2, check swing, it's high and inside, ball four. But we would always put our third base and first base coach on that sheet as well. And if it was a line drive, say he never even touched it, mm -hmm. guess what? That's an air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go make a play. Make a play. You got to go out there and try. We only ran a couple times for it. <laughs> here comes Parker Griskovich after the leadoff walk to Matt Moore. Good job by Matt Moore right there, spoken to existence, right? Drawing that walk, a good 3-2 walk as well, right? So working a pitch count, working this starter deeper into the game, right? And now Parker Griskovich gets to come out with a guy on base. First pitch misses low. Check back to Moore. Moore is back safely. Parker Griskovich, the catcher, 313 batting average, two home runs, 16 RBIs. I must suggest that picking over at Matt Moore is not a necessity, I might say if you are a pitcher. Fastball left high, and it's 2-0. Swinger, when he's been able to locate that fastball, it has been efficient, but he has been throwing the fastball pretty much as the go-to. That one's whiffed at, and it's 2-1. and one. There's that swing and miss again at that fastball up in the zone, right? So that's been the pitch that's been working for him. He just needs to find it with a little bit more command and work his other pitches as well so guys can't just sit on the fastball. 2-1. Another fastball got the inside corner, and it's two and two. 
Good pitch right there to get back, even in the count after being down 2-0. Two balls and two strikes. Checks back to Moore. Moore is back safely. Matt Moore is a guy, for those wondering, with three career stolen bases. The 2-2. Two -two. Take. Nice take there on the slider that just missed on the outside part of the plate. And Griskovich has worked the count full. Very good take right there from Parker. Working this count back to three and two. Three and two. The pitch from Swinger dribbled down the line to third. Scooped up by the third baseman. Fires across the diamond as Torres snags it. In the meantime, Matt Moore will advance 90 feet up to second base. They have, Cedarville Yellow Jackets had no chance to get more. It'll be a 5-3 ground out, but an unofficial sac of sacrifice for Parker Griskovich. Good at bat there for Parker, right? Working a full count, right? Getting a guy to throw at least seven, seven pitches in that bat. And then being able to move a guy in a scoring position just like that with McCulley coming up. Here comes James McCulley, the shortstop. He made that terrific play in the top half of the inning. This time he hits it on the line, out in the center field. It's going to drop. It's going to be down for a base hit. They're going to wave around more. There will be no throw to the plate. The Tigers played a run, and they lead 4 nothing. An RBI single for James McCulley, and it's 4 nothing. Interesting run right there. I thought it might have, was going to hold up just enough to maybe be caught, but the outfit is playing deep now, right, after seeing the ball fly on that Alex Leonidas home run. Outfit is playing a little bit deeper, so that line drive is able to fall in there and score that run. Great job of McCulley being aggressive and hitting a nice line drive right back up the middle. And here comes Ben Seibert as we're back to the top of the order. Ball gets by Shook. And an easy 90 feet advancement for James McCulley. Going back to that single, if hypothetically, if it was caught out in center field, it could have very well been a double play because Matt Moore was already rounding third with one away. So McCulley was able to get it to drop just inches in front of the center fielder, Max Depker. And now after the pass ball, and another pass ball. It gets by Shook again. And McCulley's going to go to third base. Back-to-back -back pass balls. It's 2-0 and on Seibert. And McCulley is now 90 feet away. As you were saying, Matt Moore had a very good read on that one, right? It's, you're told as a base runner, know where your outfield is, right? He looked back before and knew the center fielder was deep, saw his initial jump, and took off right away. That's something that just comes with experience, right? Matt Moore, a very good base runner, lack there of speed. 2-0, dribbled down the line to third, picked up, fires across the diamond. It's an errant throw. It's going to go all the way into the Cedarville bullpen as Seibert's going to take a turn from second. He wants third. The throw back to the infield. Seibert is into third, standing up. A dribbler down the third base line. The third baseman, Brendan Colley, was looking to go home with it. Didn't have a grip on the ball to let it rip. Throws it across the diamond, across his body. A throwing error there as it went all the way into the Cedarville bullpen. Allows Seibert with some speed to advance not just one bag, but two bags. And here comes Luke Thomas as the Tigers play to run. And they laid 5 nothing. So on that one right there, you saw the third baseman look home, right? Because, but at the angle he was at, he was blocked off, right? He was right on the baseline, so there was no really throw to home. And with Ben Seibert's speed, he was going to get there easily. That's one almost where you have to just eat it because it was a hit regardless. But he throws it away, and then Ben gets up to third base. We've talked about in the past with the Wittenberg Tigers, their mistakes that have caused free bases and free movement to get guys in scoring position. Right now it's costing Cedarville right here in the second inning. Here comes Thomas. Thomas ropes it down the line. It's caught by the third baseman. Fires across the diamond. And a bad throw. Seibert's got to get back to yeah, third. Yeah. Seibert's got to get back to third because he did not tag up the throw back to third. And he is out as a double play. It was a hot shot. Hit off the bat of Luke Thomas. It was bobbled and then caught by the first baseman. Seibert never realized that, never tagged. They threw to third. It was a bad throw, but Seibert got home and then was looking at Coach McGee. Coach McGee was telling him to get back, and he's saying, what, Coach, I scored. Well, no, he did not, and it is a double play to end the inning. Just an interesting one right there. Ben just never saw. It was an interesting catch, right? The, guy, the first baseman tipped it up to himself and then caught it in the air still. So Ben never saw that, and then he scored, went to rush home and scored, but he had to tag up, and so there's the double play right there to end the inning. 5 nothing, Tigers lead. We'll be back here on the Tigers Sports Network, powered by TKDS.
8-9, and then back to the top of the order for Cedarville as Max Depker will stand to the batter's box. Nate Floyd back out there for inning number three. First pitch fastball left outside the zone for ball one. Depker, 182 batting average. He's got one home run, nine RBIs with a 304 on base percentage. So he's found efficient ways to get on base, but the average certainly not there. Fastball misses low, and it's 2-0. Depker actually another local kid. Played his high school baseball days at Centerville High School. Just about 45 minutes southwest of here. And it's 3-0. Another fastball misses from Floyd. Way up in the count. Depker is a freshman for the Cedarville team. He's also a two-way as he's thrown 11 innings so far in this season. So a very good young athlete for the Cedarville team looking to make a good career for himself. 3-0, and another fastball. Four straight fastballs, four straight misses from Nate Floyd. And it's a four-pitch walk to start the top half of the third. Two of the four-pitch walks, the two four-pitch walks that Floyd has had have both come against lefties, and this is a lineup that is full with a lot of lefties. Sometimes for those sidearm guys, going against the lefties is even more difficult, right? So they just has to find that starting spot and find that location. Floyd now will find the fastball and will locate it as Hale stands in. Seth Hale, the left fielder, 318 batting average, with one RBI on the year. Checks back Depker, and Depker is back safely. Seth Hale, this is only his 20, uh, assuming that it will register as an at-bat, not just a plate appearance. It will be only his 23rd at-bat of the year. Dribbles this one foul, and he's quickly behind, nothing in two. No balls and two strikes as Depker gets his lead off first. Floyd comes to the plate on a sidestep, misses with the fastball on the outside. One and two. One ball and two strikes. Comes to the plate, swing and a miss. Hails down via the punch out, the second strikeout. For Nate Floyd in this one, it was a bit of a check swing, but he went around for out number one here in the top half of the third. We're back to the top of the order, and here comes Eli Henderson, the shortstop. Henderson, a flyout victim to Rocco Royer his first time round. Great pitch right there from Nate Floyd. Being able to get the strikeout for out number one. Floyd on the mound, comes to the plate, delivers a bunt, perfectly placed bunt. And Unitas scoops it up, fires over to first. Rodriguez comes off the bag. And a perfectly placed bunt there by Henderson. Henderson will have the infield single. Only the second hit of the day for Cedarville. And there's two on with one away. And here comes Neff. And we talked a lot about the designated hitter, Alex Neff, his first time up. Ultimately, one of the power hitters for this team. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, we talked about also going in that this is going to be a team, as we talked about, is going to bunt, right? And right there, I mean, just playing a little bit too far back as, as he was able to put it on a perfect bunt and get that base hit. Neff popped up to the pitcher his first time round. Neff will look at a fastball that paints the outside corner for strike one. Cedarville does have somebody warming up in the bullpen. Once we... Uh, See a number and get a number on who that is. We'll let you know for sure. 0-1 here on Alex Neff. Two on, one out. Top of the third. Tigers lead 5-0. Breaking ball. Left outside, and it's even at one. One ball and one strike here on Alex Neff. as the Yellow Jackets are threatening. The 1-1, fastball left upstairs, and it's 2-1. Floyd looking to dial back in here, as you don't want to fall behind a hitter like Neff. 2-1, pitch to Neff, fastball outside, and it's 3-1. 
Top of the third, it started with a walk to Max Depker. Hale struck out, and then Henderson got that bunt single. Neff has now worked a 3-1 count. Floyd has had struggling locating here in this inning. The 3-1, a fastball downstairs, ball four. Second walk of the inning, and they're loaded. And here comes Torres, who leads the team with the batting average, leads the team in slugging percentage. With any batter that has over 30 at-bats on the team. We're going to have a mound visit. Tigers want some time to talk things over. You're seeing Floyd miss arm side a lot on his misses, right? That's his normal miss because he is a side armor guy, right? He has a lot of natural tail to his pitch. So a team full of lefties as this lineup is. A little bit tougher, right? He's pitched very well so far. He just needs to dial back, find that starting point. Almost a lot of times with the amount of movement that he gets, you just almost think like starting it on the front hip of that left-handed hitter on that fastball, and he'll be able to locate a little bit better. Andrew Rust is up and jogging down to the Wittenberg bullpen. So we're keeping an eye on that. Tigers now have action in their bullpen. As here comes Torres. He walked his first time up on four pitches. Fastball left outside, ball one. So you see right there, like that pitch is starting right down the middle, right? But his natural tail is going to take it off the plate a little bit, right? So he just needs to find that little adjustment and dial it back in because he's not missing by much on some of these. The 1-0. Fastball. That time he got the outside corner for strike one. And sometimes it's harder when you're going against the opposite, opposite batter, right? For when there's a righty in there, he has an aiming point for his slider, an aiming point for his curveball, along with his fastball as well, right? So just need to dial that back in a little bit. One and one. Fouled back and Floyd up in the count one and two. A bullpen day for the Tigers. Floyd has started three games this year, but he has had the most success on the year out of the bullpen. He's been that swing player for the Tigers. Bounces back between the starting role and bullpen job. One and two, swing and a miss. He got Torres out in front on a changeup for strike three, and that's the second out here in the top of the third. Nasty pitch right there. Not much you could do right there. You saw Torres just trying to do whatever he could just to foul it off and live to see another day. Just a very good pitch right there to get out number two. And now let's see if he can really limit the damage here. Back pick, but he throws it away into center field, and that's going to play to run for the Yellow Jackets. They tried to catch. They tried to catch Henderson out at second base, sleeping, but the throw was errant. A throwing error there against the Tigers. Throws it away. Nothing McCauley could have done. Cyber, by the time he got to it, Depker has already crossed the plate, and it's five to one. That's the risk you play with running that play, especially with the guy on third base, right? But it's a good time to do it, right? Two outs, you're up by five. Bases loaded. The guy at second base isn't expecting it. Just off the mark, just a little bit for Cedarville to scratch their first run of the ball game. Slider finishes inside, and it's 1-0. That was a big strikeout there to Torres, and before that pickoff move that sent the ball into center field, Floyd had an opportunity to get out of a bases loaded one out jam unhurt, but now this pitch throws it. Saying it and they will them. say it hit nit, hit Ebling. Looked like it was just behind Ebling completely, but it nicked the back of his jersey. And that actually helps the Tigers mm -hmm. out because that'll save the runner from third base scoring. Although it will load up the bases again. And here comes Rotello. Yeah, if you're Floyd, you are perfectly okay with that because. That prevents that run from scoring, and he still has a chance to get out of this with only that one run. Coming in, obviously, we see Richter now, the manager for Cedarville, the head coach, coming to talk to the umpire and get asking the home plate umpire to get a second opinion. Uh, but I would be surprised to see this get overturned. That hit by pitch hurts Cedarville more than anything else mm -hmm. because it takes a run from them off the board. Which, at this point, asking for it to go away doesn't really do anything for you because doesn't the run doesn't score, right? So if anything, you just take the hit by pitch and you just live to see another day. If he were to get that call, it would have just been a ball. Just would have been a ball, and the run they don't just say, all right, now you get the next base. So I don't know the thought process there. Otherwise, it's not like you put the ball at the backstop and then have everybody <laughs> on a timeout and then you say time in and they start running. Right, exactly. So regardless, it is a hit by pitch, and we have bases loaded, two outs with no run coming in. So let's see if Floyd can get out of this with only the one run going in. Here comes Rotello, which is a, looks at a fastball low and away. 
Rotello just career just hit his uh, 220th career hit in his last at bat. McCauley made a great play. Rotello with the legs to beat it out. So a player that is not shy of these moments. Bases loaded, two outs, swing and a miss. Starting on a fastball, elevated, and it's one and one. Again, of course, like like you just said, not afraid of these moments. This is a guy with 667 career at bats, right? So. He has been in plenty of these moments, I would assume, with all the at-bats in his career. One and one from Floyd. On the ground to shortstop. McCauley scoops it, tosses it over to Thomas, and the side is retired. So Tigers, they get themselves out of a pickle as the Yellow Jackets strand the bases loaded. Tigers, they lead by four. We're heading to the home half of the third. 5-1, Wittenberg on top. So Swinger will remain in the game for Cedarville, but as we mentioned, Cedarville did have uh, action in the bullpen. The pitcher that they had warming up to come in the game has sat down, and they now have a new pitcher warming up. And once we see the number, we will certainly let you know. Andrew Rust in the Wittenberg bullpen has gone back to the dugout to sit down. All signs indicating that Nate Floyd will trot back out there for fourth inning. Here comes Royer to lead things off. 3-4-5 due up for the Tigers. Looks at a slider that was down and in. 1-0. Rocco hit that double in his last at-bat to right field. Let's see if he can keep things going in the second at-bat. 1-0. Hard hit ball into left field. It's a base hit. Royer, his second hit of the day. And that'll bring up Xander Rodriguez, a strikeout victim his last time around. Double to right field in his first at-bat. Hard line drive to left field right there. That shows just the pure all-around hitter he is, using every part of that field and getting a second hit of the ball game. Xander Rodriguez, a strikeout victim his last, last time up. They got him on a changeup. And he was out in front on. Rodriguez stands off. I beg your pardon, Rocco Royer stands off first base. Rodriguez will look at a first pitch outside for ball one. One and zero on Rodriguez in the dirt, blocked by the catcher Shook, and it's two and zero. Good hitters count right here for Xander Rodriguez. Obviously sitting one pitch. See if he can get that pitch and do some damage to it. Checks back Royer to first. Royer's back safely. Good pick count right there. Down two L. See if you can get a free out if the guy's jumpy over there. Two and zero the pitch. And it's low, and Rodriguez way up in the count. Three balls, no strikes. Still not a count where you could just lay one over. This is a point where you would give a guy like Xander Rodriguez a green light, so we'll see. Rodriguez. And that will be called a balk, as he did not come to a full set. And that will put a guy in scoring position now with Xander Rodriguez, still with a 3-0 count. Ball called there on Swinger. There was no pause in between when he came set. That's one right there also where... I think I could hear Coach McGee saying it a little bit. Um, if you're Xander Rodriguez there on that balk call, no matter, honestly, where the pitch is, you should swing. You should swing and see what happens because the ball is still live, right? So that's one where you swing, and then if you put a ball and have it find it in a little gap and you get first and third instead, you'd rather take that, right? But that's obviously something that Xander will learn over time as we will be switching pitchers here as that will do it for Swinger and his day. 
So Swinger will take a walk back to the dugout after he walks. Xander Rodriguez. Alex Nemunitis will be the first Wittenberg batter to face the new pitcher. And we'll be back here on the Tiger Sports Network powered by TKDS. Nathaniel Atkins will take over on the mound for the Cedarville Yellow Jackets. Atkins, a 9.77 ERA through 15 and two thirds of an inning. The opponent's batting average against them just 281, but 13 walks and six hit batters within those 15 and two thirds. As he will trot back out for his 10th appearance on the season. He started one of the games as he'll deliver a first pitch fastball down the middle for strike one. As Nemunitis stands in, he had a three-run home run his last time up and a chance to do it again. Here is the 0-1 from Atkins. Sidestep to the plate, breaking ball down and away, and it's 1-1. One one. Atkins is just a sophomore. Um, last season, he was actually tied for second on the team in appearances as a freshman. Right, He threw 36 innings last year, 15 appearances, nine appearances already so far this season. With a start this year, he had six last year. So this is a guy that Cedarville will use a decent amount. Breaking ball up in the zone as Nemunitis will watch it go in eye level and it's two and one. Good hitters count right here for Alex Nemunitis. A guy on base, guy in scoring position. See if he can do some more damage and get in another run. Two and one, Adkins a long pause. Now we'll come to the plate, fastball down and in, three and one. Walks have been an issue for Atkins this season. He had 23 walks in 36 innings last year. His freshman year already 13 walks in 15 and two thirds this year, right? So the walks numbers are up. walk numbers are up. Uh, probably more free bags than he would like to give up. So let's see if he attacks here. Let's see if Xander. I mean, if Alex can do some damage. Three and one. The pitch turned on. Roped foul. Hard hit ball. Love to see the exit velo on that one. He smoked it down the third baseline. But it's a foul ball, and it's three and two. Atkins working it back to full right here. Let's see who can win this battle of this at bat. Two on, nobody out. The three two payoff popped up and out of play. We're doing it again. Good swing right there. Good job protecting with two strikes. Seventh pitch of the at-bat forthcoming. As Cedarville has Geiger warming up in the bullpen. Here's the 3-2. Breaking ball. Popped up. Shallow center field. Center field and the shortstop both ranging back. The shortstop's going to go back there and make the play. Caught by Eli Henderson. It was shallow center field. As Nemunitis 
is the first out of the bottom half of the third, and here comes Connor O'Malley. Cedarville just has their outfield playing so deep to where Henderson was really the only one that could even make a play right there. Um, I've, it's always interesting to see how different teams play their outfield right. At a park like this, I am almost an advocate of not playing so deep because if the ball's in the air and hit hard, it's probably gone. So like, And then the gaps aren't that deep, so they're not going to get any triples either. There's very, I think last year we might have had two triples at this park at all. The year before that, there was zero. So just knowing that going in, I probably wouldn't be one to play the outfield so deep that it's either going to be a double off the wall or a homer anyway. So, But regardless, out number one, good catch by Henderson at short. 0-1 oh, as O'Malley will watch the first pitch breaking ball come through. The second pitch, another breaker as it's left high in the zone, 1-1. One and one. The wind is blowing out now towards right field. One and one here on Connor O'Malley. Here's the pitch. Fastball just off the edge of the plate. Makes it two and one. Two balls and one strike here on Connor O'Malley with two on and one away. Here's the pitch. Fastball in the inner third, and it's strike two, two and two. Good pitch right there. O'Malley asking if it was maybe just a little bit more in than he might have liked, right? Getting the confirmation from the umpire. Two balls and two strikes. Adkins comes set. Another long pause. O'Malley ready for it. The 2 2. Ropes this one into right field. It's going to drop for a base hit. They are going to hold Rocco Royer at third. And O'Malley with a 2-2 fastball able to take it into right field for a one-out single. And the bases are loaded with Matt Moore coming to the batter's box who walked his last time up. Great piece of hitting right there from O'Malley with two strikes. Absolute laser in the right field. Almost hit it too hard not so he couldn't get himself an RBI. But regardless, he will take the base hit. And Matt Moore now coming up with a really good opportunity with bases loaded. Bases loaded. Matt Moore, a walk victim his last time up. As there is a flyover at the stadium. Big jet flying over in center field. You might have been able to pick it up in the camera view. And it has disappeared in front of the clouds and now reappears. Will disappear behind the clouds again. You'll see those military or I don't know what branch exactly, but you'll see those things fly over here as there is a... There's a close little base by. Breaking ball. Got the outside corner. One and one here on Matt Moore. Matt Moore, knowing the situation, right, he knows that got to hit a ball hard in the air, right? Last thing he could do right now is hit a hard ground ball to get a double play to get them out of this, right? So he's going to look to elevate a pitch here and do a job, get a sack fly, and maybe even better, maybe even more. One and one. Base is loaded with one away. Breaking ball up in the zone. Two and one. Matt Moore throwing a little chicken wing out there, see if he can get a hit by pitch. Matt Moore, he's had the hot bat lately for the Tigers. Four singles and then a sacrifice fly in the first game against Worcester on Saturday. Was taken out of the game two in that two-game doubleheader against Worcester as curveball breaks in the dirt, ball three, three and one. Yeah, funny situation in that second Worcester game. Um, ben Seibert had came down with a with a little injury in between the games. And as Coach McGee was adjusting the lineup card, he forgot to move the DH, which then had us lose Matt Moore for game number two. But we still got the win in game number two, so I know Matt Moore is not too upset as he fouls that one straight back to the catcher as both Matt and the umpire will make sure the catcher gets his time to recoup. But, yeah, uh, in that moment, with that happening, Austin Luther, uh, one of the top arms for Wittenberg over the years, got his first plate appearances of his career, and he got his first career hit as well in that second Worcester game. Luther, actually, if you look at these stats, outside of Ashton Newton, who got his first hit on Sunday in his first at-bat of the season, so Newton, with one, he's one for one on the year after his hit on Sunday. He leads the team in average with 1,000, but right behind him is Austin Luther, tied with George Jansen 
both of those players one for two. I know uh, <laughs> Luther was very, very excited to get those first two at-bats. I know he was going back and watching them back over and over again, as he should. That's a very exciting moment, and he produced them. He got the bunt for a hit down. He put a good sac sacrifice bunt down, and he pitched a very good game that game as well. But regardless, now we're at back at a 3-2 count as the catcher is okay, and Matt Moore will look to still win this at-bat here, 3-2. and two. They brought the trainer out to question Caden Shook. It looks like he's okay. 3-2, bases loaded, one away. Breaking ball high in the zone, ball four. Moore his second walk of the day, and it's going to play to run for the Tigers as well, make it 6-1 to as Royer has walked in. Matt Moore will take an RBI, nice little RBI that way. Um, as we talked about before Matt's first at bat, we talked about he needed to improve on his walk numbers. And just like that, two walks to start this game for Matt Moore. And he brings in a run doing so. Now we see Parker Griskovich coming up in the same situation. Bases loaded and one out. Here comes Griskovich, the catcher. Caught game one on Saturday. Did not catch game two. Swing and a miss. Tardy on the fastball, 0-1. Then he was also off on Sunday as well. Griskovich, obviously, a primary catcher for the Winburg Tigers. Very good defensively, good hitter as well. So saving his legs as much as possible with this busy week ahead. 0-2, oh, starting on another fastball as Griskovich has fallen behind, nothing and two. Bases loaded, one away. Corners are in for Cedarville as they trail 6-1. to one. After blowing two fastballs by him, let's see if they go back to that or if they try to change it up. 0-2, oh, the pitch. Another fastball this time taken into right field. Hit pretty well. Going back. It's going to bounce and roll into the corner. A couple of runs are going to score. Griskovich has his eyes set on third. He'll halt and stay at second. It is a two-run RBI double as Parker Griskovich going crazy out there on second base. As we just talked about, they threw two straight fastballs by Parker right there. And we, were saying, we said, uh, are they going to go back to it a third time or are they going to change it up? They went back to it a third time, and Parker did not miss that one with the two RBI double right there. And now James McCulley looks to bring in another RBI like he did in his first at bat with two guys on the pond. And here comes McCulley, singled his first time up. Tigers have opened up this one. They lead by a touchdown. As Adkins now trying to work himself out of a jam. First pitch swinging as... Uh, McCauley flies this one out, and it is going to drop. It's going to drop above the second baseman's head. And coming on to score will be Matt Moore Griskovich to third, and the Tigers get one more off of a looping single off the bat of James McCauley, his second hit of the day. Hey, all that matters in the book is that he's two for two, two line drives into the outfield for two RBIs. So good job by James McCauley. Being aggressive again, we see him in this game, in the past couple of games, he was getting behind in counts. His strikeouts were a little bit higher. He's being more aggressive right here, swinging at the first pitch in both at bats and bringing in two RBIs just like that. As we're back to the top of the order with Ben Seibert. Seibert, one for two, popped up his first at bat, got a base hit his last at bat. Seibert hit that slow roller on the ground to third. They tried going home with it, but didn't have a full grip of the ball, so they threw it to first, and then Seibert. After the errant throw, ended up not just on second, but on third. Very wide out of play foul territory here at Carlton Davidson Stadium. So anytime that a ball does skew away down the line, you will see a lot of times two bags come out of it. There's the 1-1 one, one on Seibert outside. Breaking ball, and it's 2-1. Carlton Davidson Stadium, certainly special, of course, it's unique in its own way. A hitter's ballpark, uh, one of the nicest ballparks in the entire region. Bigger, a lot of foul ground, more than normal, as Cyber turns on this one, going back, but it's foul. And then we talk about it being a hitter's ballpark, 320 down the line, 390 straightaway center field. Lower, just your average size fence all the way around the ballpark. But what makes it a hitter's ballpark is the wind gusts that come off Buck Creek that sits and flows right behind Carlton uh, Davidson Stadium. Oh, yeah. Majority of the time, the wind is going to be blowing out, blowing out for hitters. Uh, not the most friendly thing for pitchers, right? But the hitters will always love that. Um, but, yeah, it's, very, it's a very unique park as that curveball just did not break enough to make it a full count but also the fact that the gaps aren't very deep, right? The fence is only 320 down the lines. Um, it's a very unique park in the way that it plays. 
Certainly one of the nicer ballparks as well. The 3-2, Cyber turns on one, takes it down the left field line. Griskovich is going to score. Here comes McCulley to third. McCulley's into third. Cyber swipes second as well. You got two of the faster guys on the bases right there with James McCulley and Ben Cyber, both of them able to advance an extra base right there. As that ball didn't get by the left fielder, but both those guys speeding around the bases able to get two more guys in scoring position just like that with another great hitter and Luke Thomas coming up to follow. And here comes pitching coach Dave Steele out to the mound. As Cedarville will be making a pitching change right here. Cedarville called to the bullpen, but going back real quick before we take a break, finishing our talk on Carlton Davidson Stadium, one of the nicest and one of the most beautiful ballparks in the entire region. And you mentioned unique how it plays. Of course, that wind that comes off Buck Creek that flows right behind the stadium, that wind comes off of it and pushes everything out over the fence. Even on the days where, if you, you can look out and see the flag right now, it doesn't look like it's blowing that hard, right? It looks like it's like a decent wind. It's very deceiving, right? There, it is always blowing, and it's always going to make a difference on fly ball. That's something you have to adjust to and learn. You'll have some days where it's blowing in, but it's very rare. We had one of those actually the other day where the wind was blowing in. Um, but, yeah, as a pitcher, you have to know you have to generate ground balls, right? Also going into that, right, like the playing surface itself, right, the grass is pretty thick here, right? It's pretty thick grass, so it slows down ground balls, right? So if you are a good, efficient ground ball pitcher, this is a great park for you, right? But if you leave pitches up in the zone, hitters will take advantage. Can we just say that Carlton Davidson Stadium, the great American ballpark of the NCAC? <laughs> it, it's just a beautiful ballpark, as you were saying, right? Um, you can't really see the stadium itself based on your camera view, right? But you have such a good grandstands around here, right? You have the underneath, you have the dugouts, you have the locker rooms, right? So this is home of the Winberg Tigers and the Champion City Kings and that summer organization. So this is just a great ballpark to come out to and watch some great baseball. We'll be back in 30 seconds after a call to the bullpen. Geiger, a freshman, will take over on the mound. And Jordan Geiger, a 5'16 ERA, one of the go-to guys out of the pen for a very young Cedarville team. Geiger, a very talented freshman, already 11 appearances so far, has two games started, one of those being a complete game in, that st in one of those starts. So very good pitcher right here as they're looking to have him probably, I would assume, go and see how far he can take this thing. Couple of uh, Yellow Jackets sitting in their bullpen, but nobody warming up or throwing as first pitch fastball down the middle as Luke Thomas, one for two, singled in the first and then hit into a double play as last at bat. Back in the second, Tigers already up as Thomas gets under this one, pops it up to the second baseman, caught off from the center fielder and the center fielder, Max Depker will come on to make the play. Round number two, and here comes Rocco Royer. Centerfield had to make a long run right there to get that one. But with that long run, I think if the second baseman would have caught that one backpedaling, I think you would have seen James McCulley test that one out, right, with the second baseman backpedaling, tough play, right? But with the center fielder running in with all the momentum, just going to leave it to Rocco Royer, one of your best hitters right here with two guys in scoring position, give him a shot. Rocco Royer led off the bottom of the third. He led off with a single. He's two for two with a double and a single. So missing a triple and a home run as this one hit on a line into center field. It's going to drop for a base hit. The wave is on as McCauley's going to score. Here comes Seibert. The Tigers get two more, and the Tigers have opened this one up. They lay by 11 in the bottom of the third. And that's why right there you don't test it right there. You give your guy a chance behind you. Rocco being one of the better hitters around, doing his job once again and bringing in two RBIs with that line drive single. And we talked about Double to right field is first at bat. Line drive single to left field that in the second one. And a line drive single to center field in that one, right? So just a pure all-around hitter in Rocco Royer doing his job once again. 12-1, the Tigers on top. As Royer, the player who got it all started in the third, 
Stands now off first base. Xander Rodriguez walked earlier in the inning. He was a strikeout victim his first time round. Xander fooled right there. Tried to just get rid of it right, live to see another pitch. That's one right there. If you get fooled, just swing through. Don't even give it a chance to be in play and wasting that bat, right? But now he'll be working 0-1. Rodriguez turns on it, but foul ball. Action in the bullpen for Cedarville once again. This Wittenberg Tigers team, we talked about, obviously, the different divisions, right? Division three, Division two. Um, this Wittenberg offense is good at pretty much any division you put it in. It uh, doesn't really matter. Um, as the Tigers have faced many different divisions throughout in recent memory. In 2021, they also faced Akron to open up their season, in which the Tigers pulled out a victory 5-1 in that game against Division one Akron. Uh, they beat Cedarville last time they saw them in 2021, 17-5, right? So... Don't let the division fool you, right? There's good baseball all around at any level, including NIIA, JUCO, right? Good level of baseball anywhere if you go and watch the right teams. One and two on Rodriguez. The pitch to Rodriguez outside, and it's two and two. Two balls and two strikes now on Xander Rodriguez. It's been a nice little long inning right here for the Tigers. It's going to be interesting to see how they play with Nate Floyd coming back out this inning, I would assume, as good cur slider, curveball right there to get the second strikeout on Zayda Rodriguez of the day. But nonetheless, Tigers strike big seven runs in that bottom of the third inning. I would assume you're going to see some pitchers down there. Obviously, we saw Andrew Russ forming up. I would assume they're going to have Nate Floyd go out there but have guys ready as that was a pretty long break in between. And with the Tigers up 11 runs, might see more of the bullpen arms come in earlier in this game. 12-1, Wittenberg leads. We're heading to the top of the fourth here on the Tiger Sports Network, powered by TKDS. After a seven-run bottom of the third for the Tigers, Cedarville, they have some catching up to do. It is 12-1. They're in the top of the fourth. And here comes Colley to lead things off. Colley, the sixth batter in the order. Grounded into a double play the last time up. As a look at a first pitch strike number one. Shook and Depker also do up here in the top half of the fourth. Pitch from Floyd. Jammed him and fouled back out of play quickly behind nothing and two. 0 oh and 2 here on Brendan Colley, the third baseman. He's made a nice couple of plays at third. As Floyd will step off as the pitching coach, or I beg your pardon, the first base coach, tying the umpire's shoe. Oh, just, no, so. <laughs> just the kind gesture down there for, I mean, both both teams, no matter how you are, you're going to treat the umpire as well. I, I don't think he was tying the shoe. I think, I think there might be a sprinkler head under there that might have popped out. Could be. The, that. Um, so I think he was putting the patch right back over it. That could be true as well. But we'll say he was tying a shoe and doing a nice gesture for the umpire. Breaking ball outside. Looks like from our angle, again, our, our angle, yes, we're up here in the press box, but it does get misconstrued a few times, more times than not. We're a pretty good ways away, right? Big ballpark, big, nice little grandstand, so 
Sometimes we don't get the best angle at things. One and two, and Floyd will plunk. Brendan Colley. Colley, the leadoff man, is on first. During the break, our very own Dylan Jackson ran down to the dugout to inquire if there is a run rule in this game. Both coaches talk about it beforehand. What did you find out? Found out that we don't know for certain yet. <laughs> as Coach McGee, a lot of times, if there is one, he won't tell the players, right? He just wants them to play hard throughout the innings or whatever, and Coach McGee was busy, so I wasn't able to talk to him in between. Um, but I did ask one of our athletic, train, our athletic trainer, Nathan Irvin, um, if he were to find out any information to text us and let us know. So if we find out any information on that, we will let you guys know as well. Run rules are discussed before the game happens, so it's different in every game when it's out of conference. When it's NCAC play, it's different. It's always 10 after 7. Fastball inside. Floyd's behind 2-0. and Action in the Tigers' bullpen. We saw, right, never want to see it, right, a 1-2, a two-strike hit by pitch, especially when you're heading the count like that. And as soon as it happened, you saw Andrew Russ, who was sitting out there waiting, get right on the mound, right? We talked about probably with that long rest, it's not easy for a pitcher, right? In a seven-run inning, an inning where you're sitting down for a while after going, it's tough sometimes to come back and dial right back in. So Andrew Russ is out there just in case if necessary. 2-0, the pitch on the ground. Finds a hole into right field. It's a base hit. There goes station to station as O'Malley got to it rather quickly. But a, a single off the bat there of Caden Shook br brings uh, Max Depker to the batter's box with the first two batters reaching aboard here in the top half of the fourth. And here comes manager McGee. He'll point to the bullpen, and that'll do it for Nate Floyd. Good outing for Nate Floyd, obviously, with... Like we said, we have a long slate of games coming up for the Tigers. Going to save Nate Floyd. Had a very good outing. Only the one run allowed. I don't know for certain if it was earned or not, as we will check on that. Right now, I'll give you his final stat line. Uh, he gave up one run. That one was not. That run was not earned. He went three innings pitch. Only gave up three hits, three walks. And getting out of there with only 57 pitches. So he will be available. A guy that you will see probably this weekend as well going forward. Um, but with that being said, they will go to Andrew Russ, the sophomore pitcher. The two base runners are Nate Floyd's responsibility. Go to the bullpen. Tigers get the ball over to Andrew Rust. And we'll be back here on the Tigers Sports Network, powered by TKDS. Dylan Jackson just went over Nate Floyd's numbers, but the two base runners are his responsibilities. So we're keeping an eye on that. His He goes three innings, three hits, one run. It was unearned, three walks, and a couple of strikeouts as well. Three strikeouts to be exact, but the runners on first and second. Nate Floyd's responsibility as they turn it over to Russ. Let's take a look at the numbers. Pitching staff, or the pitching totals for Cedarville. So I... Swanger got the start. He went two innings, allowing six hits, seven earned runs, two walks, one strikeout, and then they turned it over to Adkins. Adkins went a third of an inning, allowing four hits, five earned runs, and a walk as well. Rust will take over on the mound for the Tigers with two on and nobody away. Fastball left outside for ball one. Russ, the pitcher who has a 551 ERA through 16 and a third. Opponent's batting average against Andrew Rust, just 250 on the season. 1-0, turned on, pulled foul. 
Andrew Russ is a very talented young pitcher, only a sophomore. Had six starts in his freshman campaign, went 3-0 and on the season. He has, has three starts so far this season, six appearances out of the pen. This is his seventh appearance of the year. Excuse me, four, four appearances out of the pen. Um, six appearances total coming into the day. But it's Hardy on the fastball, pulls it foul, one and two. But Andrew is a guy who, when he's ahead to count and he's commanding the zone, he is very tough to hit, as you said. Only Guys only hitting 250 against him so far on the season. Um, so this is a guy that got, Winberg is very comfortable with putting in this situation. One and two, the pitch. Bouncer to first. Rodriguez has it, bobbles it. He'll just step on first for the easy out. The runners will advance one away here in the top of the third, but now two in scoring position, and here comes Hale. Good job by Xander right there, just eating that one up. Obviously, we've seen some of the hops that will come off the lips here. Um, and Xander just blocks that one up. He was a catcher originally. He still is a catcher, obviously, but playing first base for Wittenberg this season. Uh, so going back to his catching roots, taking that one right off the chest and getting the out at first. Both runners advance. Here's Hale. Hale, dribbler up the middle, diving at 10. Thomas can't get there. The ball bounces. They get one run. Here comes the throw to the plate for two. Misses the tag. He's under it. And two runs will score off of the slow roller single up the middle. And Cedarville strikes for two here in the fourth. Both of those earned runs will be on Nate Floyd's stat line. And it is now 12 to three. Wittenberg still on top. Tough play right there. Just off of the outstretch glove of Luke Thomas. James McCulley made a good throw home afterwards to make the play even close at home but he was able to slide in there safely. And I might have jinxed Nate Floyd's final stat line as those runs will be his, as you mentioned. Breaker outside, and it's 1-0. As we're back to the top of the order, here comes Eli Ender Henderson, the shortstop. It's 1-2. One 1-0. One Fastball paints the outside corner for strike one, one and one. We talk about the uniqueness of Carlton Davidson Stadium, the sounds of the stadium, the ballpark. Of course, we had a uh, jet fly over us not too long ago. We have, uh, now it sounds like uh, some sport cars out on the main road. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one and one, the pitch. This one taken the other way, and it's going to be trouble. Into the left center field gap, and we'll wall all the way to the warning track. Wave is on for Depker. Here comes Depker. Or I beg your pardon, that's Hale. Hale all the way to the plate. He is up. He will score. It is a one-out RBI double off the bat of Henderson. And Cedarville will claw closer. Cedarville, like you said, clawing away little by little. Great piece of hitting right there from Henderson as he takes hits a nice line drive back side to bring in those runs. And here comes Neff. Cedarville, their fifth hit of the day. Winberg's got 11. Henderson, just a freshman. Just a freshman with a very good approach right there going backside. Hitting that line drive to bring in those runs. Neff, 0 for 1. He popped up to the pitcher his first at bat. Walked his second at bat. Off speed in there. Got the outside corner for strike one. Nothing in one now on Alex Neff, the designated hitter. And flies this one out. Shallow center field. Here comes Seibert. Seibert makes the play. Quickly guns it right back into the field. As Henderson looked like he wanted to tag, but will not test Seibert's arm. He's back on the bag. Two away here in the top half of the fourth. And that'll bring up uh, Torres. Austin Torres. Stand in. No for one. Strikeout victim his last time up. He walked his first at bat. Basketball got the outside. I beg your pardon, just outside. 1 0. Just missed right there. Good pitch by Andrew. Just missed on the outer half. We are, we have 
as that's a line drive hit in the right field. Connor, if ball over Connor O'Malley's outstretched glove, as that will be another double that will score another run. Hard hit line drive right there to score Henderson from second base. Good piece of hitting there from Torres. We were aware of the technical difficulty from the video camera. I believe they should be back and running. Um, we are good to go. Sorry about that. Thanks for taking over there for me. I had to step away for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but we are back as good piece of hitting right there from Torres. And he's able to bring in that run. He got to call a double. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Torres with a double. 12-5. Breaking ball. Russ gets the upper half of the zone for strike one. Beg your pardon. Had to step away. We had some camera difficulties. But we are good to go. Get to work on my play-by-play -play every once in a while. It's always good to have good tune-ups. 0-1, oh breaking ball. Low and away, and it's 1-1. One one. Good slider, just missed, right? Just a little bit low. One and one, Russ comes set on the mound. Two away here in the top of the fourth, an inning which Cedarville has strunk for four. Slow roller on the ground. Nemunitis has it. Fires the first. Rodriguez with the pick, and the siders retire. Damage done. Cedarville strikes for four. Trying to claw their way back. 12-5. Tigers lead. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Alex Nemunitis will get things going in the bottom half of the fourth. It has been an offensive explosion for both teams. 12-5. Cedarville just struck for four in the top half of the inning. Alex Nemunitis, his fourth at bat coming up. Sometimes you'll, as that slider just misses down in the dirt, but you'll see the offensive explosions during the midweek games at times, right? Sometimes teams are a little bit lower on pitching, uh, things of that nature. Right, but these are two teams who are good offensively as well, and you see that so far today. Beg your pardon, Alex Nemunitis. He is this is only his third at bat. Hit that three run home run back in the first. Strikeout victim last time. Two and zero oh up in the count. The pitch popped up. Pitcher and the catcher both giving chase. Falls in no man's land. A new life for Nemunitis with a two one count. I mean, just getting under a couple pitches. He right that, that one right in the hands a little bit, just under it. Good pitch right there. Two and one now on Alex Nemunitis. As he'll stand in. Pitcher comes set, comes to the plate. And the dirt bounces up over the plate, but three and one. Cloudy day, rain is coming. One of the reasons why they moved the game up from 6 p.m. start time to 5.15. Fastball, upper half of the zone for a strike two. We've gone full. Tough pitch to do anything with on that one right there. Right, Good velo right at the top of the zone. I mean, Ice just takes it right there, lives to see another pitch, see what he could do in a 3-2 count. 
3-2. Fastball just missed, and it's ball four, a leadoff walk for Alex Nemunitis. Good pitch, great take right there from Alex Nemunitis, laying off that one just off the plate as he is the first base runner to start this inning as the leadoff guy with Connor O'Malley to follow behind him. Here comes O'Malley to the plate. And Unitas gets his lead. O'Malley will look at a first pitch changeup that's a little bit low. The wind has come to a dead stop here. Probably only moments before it picks back up, now that I said that. 1-0 here on O'Malley, but first a check back, Nemunitis back safe. Jordan Geiger on the bump for Cedarville, working out of the stretch. Sidestep to the plate, outside fastball, O'Malley up in the count 2-0. Action in Cedarville's bullpen. Looks like a lefty getting loose. Change up the approach of the Tigers. 2-0. Breaking ball. Got the outside corner. Strike one, 2-1. and one. Connor O'Malley has been a guy who's been a little unlucky as of recently. Uh, he's had some good at-bats over the last couple of games. Not all of them have fallen for him. He's looking to just get out of that little Adam ball slump. O'Malley turns on it. Up, and it is a fair ball down the right field line. Nemunitis heading to third. O'Malley heading to second. They will hold everybody there. O'Malley slides into second base. He's in there beating the throw. He's safe. Flipping his wings. He was flying around the base paths. And it's a double for O'Malley and the Tigers back in business. Connor O'Malley with a great job getting out of the box. Getting out of the box thinking double, right? Seeing that ball down the line and getting in there. And getting a great, nice little double on a Tuesday, Tuesday. Good work by number one, by one five. Connor O'Malley, NCAC Scholar Athlete Award winner. It was announced late last week that he won that award. It has been a busy week for Mr. Connor O'Malley, and he has been terrific. Certainly finding his stride at the plate. And another player who's finding his stride at the plate, Matt Moore stands in, looks at a first pitch fastball at the knees for strike one. We talked about in the new lineup, right, having that a nice little core of hitters and O'Malley and Matt Moore being down in the six and seven hole. And so far today, Matt Moore has been on twice with an RBI. O'Malley has two hits on the day with a double, right? So Matt Moore upset with himself right there, missing that hanging curveball um, as the count is now at 0-2. Matt Moore, he's walked both at-bats. But he's behind now, 0-2. 12-5 the score. There's pitch. Fastball high. Gets away from the catcher. Bounces off the backstop. Nem Unitas will score O'Malley to third. Tigers get one more, making it 13-5. Another unique thing about this park that we didn't see come into play there, right? But the backstop is cement, right? The lower half of the backstop is cement, followed by netting all the way up, right? So if that ball would have been a little bit lower, it would have bounced straight back to the catcher. And Alex, it would have been a harder attempt for Alex to try to score there. That one just caught the net, so it stopped, and Alex was able to walk in easy. One and two, the pitch to Moore. Moore pops it up, back in foul ground. First baseman gave him chase, makes an over-the-shoulder grab, and completely now just turns around and throws it home. O'Malley was threatening. He's back on the bag. That's a great play right there from Torres. That is not an easy play over the shoulder like that. Turning around and putting a very good throw, using the turf and preventing O'Malley from scoring as well. That was impressive. Torres with a great play. Here comes Griskovich. One away here. In the bottom of the fourth, the Tigers have scored at least one run in every inning in this ballgame. Three in the first, two in the second, seven in the third, and now one in the fourth. Griskovich watches a fastball upstairs for ball one. Griskovich is one for two on the day so far, looking to get his second hit and bring in a run right here. 1-0, and oh, the pitch to Griskovich, another fastball high, and it's 2-0. and oh. Two balls and no strikes. Pitch, breaking ball. Front door breaker in there for strike one. Good breaker right there, 2-0, right? 
Griskovich not wanting that pitch, not looking for that one early on. So a good job right there to drop that one in there for strike number one by Geiger. Here's the 2-1. Breaking ball, fouled back, 2-2. Two and two. Nice curveball by Geiger. Had Griskovich way out in front. You see Geiger trusting that pitch, even down in the count, right? Good job by the freshman showing his arsenal, getting back in the count, 2-2 two and two with two breakers. 2-2, two and two, runner on third in the dirt, and we've gone full. So, so now he has gone to those two breakers back-to-back, -back, four strike for two strikes in a row. Couldn't find the fastball right there. Let's see if he goes back to the fastball or if he goes back to that pitch that was working for him earlier. Three and two, fastball downstairs, ball four. Griskovich is on with one away. Back to the fastball again and just can't really find, a, seem to find a strike with the fastball right now, at least in that at bat. Um, good job by Parker Griskovich, good at bat right there to get on base and keep things going with one out. Here comes McCauley. If you're the Tigers, you're really hoping to bring in that second run with O'Malley being on third base. He was at third base with no outs, right? So you really want to make sure that run does come in to score. O'Malley out in front on the changeup for a strike one, right through it. Again, the struggles that Cedarville has faced this season has been walks, hit batters, and that is what's plagued them today. Wittenberg, of, only thir 13 runs, but only 12 hits on those 13 runs. A lot of free bags, right? You don't want to give up free bags. You don't want to let guys get in the scoring position for free either. That comes from pass balls, wild pitches, errors defensively, right? And that plagued the Tigers early on this season, right? A lot of ugly baseball, not clean baseball, and that has caused some runs to be scored. It's hard to play with more than 27 outs, right? you got to play the 27 outs and get them when you can. McCauley turns on one and blasts this one into left field. Left fielder giving chase, makes the grab. O'Malley will tag up. They have no chance to get him. It's a sacrifice fly. Off the bat of James McCauley. Tigers back up by nine. Great job by James right there in an 0-2 count to do his job, get a sack fly, and bring in that second run, that much-needed second run, right? You give up four runs in the top half. You want to do whatever you can to scratch back and keep that lead close to where it was, and a good job bringing in that second one of this inning. Now here comes Seibert. Seibert looks to keep things going, looks at a first-pitch curveball for strike one. Guy going to that breaker a lot, right? It's been working for him. It's, he's been able to throw that one consistently for strikes. Oh, and one. Pitch in the dirt. And the fastball, he's just choking it down a little bit. He's missing it down in the dirt. Um, so we'll see if he can find that here soon or if he continues to just go back to the success of the breakers that he's had. Runner on first with two away, one and one. As Seibert turns on this one, takes it down the left field line. It's a fair ball. It's going to roll right in front of the track. Griskovich will go first to third. Seibert's into second. He's flapping his wings as well. A two-out double there off the bat of Ben Seibert. The inning will continue for Luke Thomas. Two doubles on a Tuesday night. Good job by Ben Seibert. <laughs> Sitting on that breaker on the inner half and hitting it down the left field line for that double. And now... The baton is passed to Luke Thomas to try to bring in these two runs as they're both in scoring position. Here comes Thomas. Thomas, one for three. Singled in the first. Since then, he hit that, smoked that line drive that resulted in a double play back in the second, then flew out in the third. 14 to five. Tigers lead. Breaking ball. Playing away for ball one. Geiger on the mound will come set. Two in scoring position with two away. The pitch to Thomas popped him up. Drifting back, middle infield, giving chase, taking a tumble on the mound. The third baseman, Brendan Colley, is able to hang on to it even through the fall. And the side is retired. Damage done. The Tigers, they've gotten two or more runs in every single inning of this game. They've opened it up again. 14-5, to five. Tigers lead. We're going to the fifth.
Five, six, seven, due up here for Cedarville as Rotella will lead things off. Andrew Russ back on the mound, but Gavin Lone is up in the bullpen and throwing for the Tigers. The freshman South Paul out there in the bullpen, getting ready just in case his number is called. Here's pitch Rotello as Rotello hits it high, not very deep, just right out to Ben Seibert, who snags it for out number one. We are expecting rain here in the Springfield area. Again, the reason why this game was moved up 45 minutes. No, no answer on when it will hit, but you can definitely tell that it looks like the rain clouds have certainly started to move in. Nothing has fallen yet. One up, one down, nasty slider there. As Collie swings right through it as it was way outside the zone, but Russ wins the pitch. It's nothing in one. Nasty slider right there, like you said. Oh, and one, the pitch. Fastball inside corner, and if you can follow up a nasty slider with that, with an inside fastball, now he is completely in control of the batter's mind. Collie down 0-2. Russ looking for the punch out. Digs in his glove, kicks, deals from the windup. Another slider. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Swing and a miss. Collie's down via the punch out as Russ just dominated just dominated that at bat from the get-go. You know, there's times when you talk about it as a hitter, like sometimes you only get one good pitch to hit. Right there, pitcher didn't give you one, just an outstanding sequence right there from Andrew Russ to get that strikeout on three pitches. Tough at bat as a hitter, sometimes you just have to live with it and say, hey, tip your cap to the pitcher, good job. Russ retires the first two batters. Fastball down and in. As here's the catcher, Shook. Caden Shook. One for two. Singled his last time up. One and oh, the pitch from Rust inside corner. Strike one, one and one. One ball and one strike. Russ moving with some tempo. Kicks, deal, slider. Breaks away from Griskovich, way outside, 2-1. and one. Looking down his landing, landing spot, might have slipped a little bit right there. Pulled that one off. Two balls and one strike. Russ to the plate. Mm. Inside fastball, even at two apiece. He's locating that fastball in the inner half really well, especially when he's able to come off with that slider on the outer half like you were mentioning. When you can... Back to back those pitches like that, it makes it really tough as a hitter. Here's the 2 2. Russ kicks, deals to the plate, slider, swing, and a miss. Back to back punch outs for Andrew Russ. And 1 2 3 go the Yellow Jackets. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Tigers, they lead by nine.
Rocco Royer will lead things off. 3-4-5 coming up for the Tigers. Here in the bottom of the fifth after Cedarville went 1-2-3. We have a pitching change out there on the mound. I believe taking over is Wyatt Fisher for the Yellow Jackets. It looks like number 31. 31, yes, Walker not 21. Harris. That is Walker Harris. Looked like 21, but it is 31, Walker Harris. Harris will take over, 11.57 ERA. One and one on Royer. Royer up the middle, diving attempt, can't get there. Royer will take the turn from first, he'll retreat back. It is a lit off single from Rocco Royer. To begin the bottom of the fifth as the Tigers, their 13th hit of the day. And here comes Xander Rodriguez. Four for four on the day for Rocco Royer, another line drive, Rocco Royer has been on fire today, and not just today. He's been on fire all season long as he has been. Fun to watch. Here comes Xander Rodriguez to the batter's box. Topped it, but foul. Walker Harris is a freshman right-handed pitcher from Milton, Georgia. So, long ways away for Mr. Harris in his freshman campaign. So far, he's made seven appearances, nine and a third innings. Nothing and one now on Xander Rodriguez. Royer gets his lead off first. Here's the pitch to Rodriguez. Fastball outside. One and one. Walker Harris. Opponent's batting average against them. 325. So a hittable pitcher. Outside in the dirt, and it's two and one. He's a little bit of a sidewinder, right? The velo is not. His specialty, right, he's going to be a guy who's going to throw a lot of junk. And a lot of times you'll see it with younger guys, especially that have this type of piss, pitching arsenal. You don't get away with leaving pitches up in the middle of the zone as much, right? Like, you really have to be really effective if you're a guy like this. You have to have good command low in the zone in order to generate ground balls and soft contact. Rodriguez fouls it back, 2-2. Two and two. Royer on first. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch. Rodriguez the other way to third. Five, four. Cross the diamond for three. It's a double play. And the bases are cleared. Two away in the inning. And here comes Connor O'Malley. It wasn't a horrible barrel, but we've talked about the thick grass here. And just got caught up. And it was a very good turn by good throw by the third baseman over to second base. And a good turn to turn that double play to get two outs with Alex Simi Nice coming up now, looking to start this inning over. It was Collie to Ebling over across the diamond to Torres. 5 4 3, but the bases being cleared did not last long. First pitch, Nemi Unitas plunked in the back. He'll go down to first and with two away. Here comes Connor O'Malley. Looks like that we talked about, right? Two outs, two outs. You got to get that third one. Don't let the innings linger. And right now, He's letting the inning linger, and now Wittenberg has another chance to score with the guy on base and Connor O'Malley up to plate. O'Malley standing into the batter's box. First pitch fastball, and Unitas took off. No communication by the Cedarville Yellow Jackets. There was nobody covering, and Nebunitis just easily swipes second base. Nice little delay steal right there. If all it takes is a little bit of people looking away, right? Falling asleep, and right there, he's able to get in there easily. We talked about Winburg, not a team that has a lot of stolen bases so far this season, as that ball is low to make the count one and one, but a team that only has eight stolen bases coming in today, that's only their ninth, and they've only attempted now 16, right? So not a lot of stolen bases. They're going to have to try to do different things to see how they can steal bases and get guys in scoring position just like that, and now O'Malley only needs a single to score that run. One and one, O'Malley pops it up. Down the third base line in foul territory, giving chase. Had room, but overran it. And O'Malley will have new life with a one ball, two strike count. Tough territory over there because, as we talked about on 90% of fields, that's just out of play and you don't have to worry about it, right? It's a little bit of uncharted territory for a third baseman wandering that far into foul territory. But now, but now we got Walker Harris getting to a one two count, and O'Malley's going to have to try to do some work here with two strikes. Runner in scoring position, that's Alex Nemunitis, who just got plunked. He hit that three-run home run back in the first.
Fisher comes set. Harris comes set, beg your pardon, inside. But going back to the lack of stolen bases and stuff so far for the Tigers, little stuff like that like really matters, right? Like Because now you have a guy in scoring position and a chance to manufacture a run right there. If the Tigers can find a way to do that more consistently throughout the season, it'll help them generate more runs, even though they've been scoring runs at a really good pace, right? But 2-2, two -two, up the middle, off the glove, backhand, throws across the diamond to first. The lunge is not in time. It was a great play by the second baseman, Ebling. Pulled a Jeter throwing it back over to Torres. Torres did the splits at first, but O'Malley was there safe. It's an infield single for Connor O'Malley, and here comes Matt Moore with runners on the corners and two down. Good play right there, right? But just O'Malley being a good athlete, he is a big guy, but he can still move down the line a little bit as he was a very good athlete, still is a very good athlete, but time to tell you what kind of athlete that he is. He was a high school quarterback for St. Edwards High School. If you guys know anything about high school football, not only in Ohio, but across the nation, you know what St. Edwards is as a football program for him to be the starting quarterback at that school. Shows the kind of athlete Connor O'Malley is. St. Edwards, three-time state champions in a row. Is this one flight out to center field? Coming on to make the grab will be Dipker, and the side is retired. St. Edwards, three-peat state champs against the Springfield Wildcats yep. right here right in here. the hometown. We're heading to the sixth, 14 to five. Tigers on top. Eight nine one coming into the dish for Cedarville, and the away half of the sixth inning, fourteen to five Tigers leading on an offensive explosion thus far. As Depker will stand in, first pitch hits it on a line opposite field, hitting into left field. Royer will smother it on the turf. Will throw it on in. And the leadoff man is aboard. Max Depker, first pitch he sees, goes the other way. Very hard hit line drive right there by Depker. Good piece of hitting. Attacking early in the count, first pitch of the, of the inning. They saw the trouble that they were having when they were falling behind on Andrew Russell. Right there, they were being aggressive and hit a nice little line drive into left field. Fastball on the outside part of the plate. Taken for ball one. Russ was able to get the first one, two, three inning in the sit in the fifth, I beg your pardon. The sixth inning, not so much. As first pitch, Depp Garcia smokes it into left field. Tigers have a couple of pitchers up in the pen. Both bumps are being utilized in the pen. Nobody in the pen for Cedarville. This one on the ground. Thomas had problems with it. Now tries to pick it up and fires it. But it's way too late. An E4 on Luke Thomas. And Cedarville's got some life here with nobody out in the top of the sixth in a nine-run game that they're trailing, but the first two batters of the inning are on, and we shift it back to the top of the order as here comes Eli Henderson. Just a little too antsy there. You hear the, the term, Taylor made double play, right? So a little antsy trying to make the throw before fielding the ball, and it just pops right out of his glove. As Coach McGee will go up there to talk to Andrew, probably just say, 
good job. You got a good ground ball right there, right? Should have been an old play. We're fine. Luke, Luke Thomas, I know, will go up there and say, my bad. Get another ground ball. Give me, I'll get you back right here, right? But probably just to give the guys out in the bullpen more time as well, make sure that they're hot and ready like a Little Caesars pizza when necessary. That's a great an- analogy. That is a great simile. Little Caesars pizza, they always are hot and ready. Hot and ready. Something about them. You know, for a $5 pizza, I don't think you can ask for more. <laughs> hey, pizza's pizza, man. I'll always have a good pizza <laughs> no matter what. And now that your playing days are over, you can eat all the pizza you want. Oh, yeah. I don't think that stopped me when I was playing either. But. <laughs> we mentioned at the top of the broadcast it was a bullpen day for the Tigers. Nate Floyd got the start. He went three innings, two earned runs, three hits, three strikeouts. Andrew Russ took over. He's thrown two innings, two earned runs, four hits. Could very well see another bunt for a hit here. And Unitas this time is playing in. So is Rodriguez, the corners. Pass ball down and away for ball one. Henderson had a bump for a hit earlier in this game. His last at bat, he hit that double in the left center. So could see him single, swing away also as he looks to be seeing the ball pretty well. Two on, nobody out. The side set to the plate. Fastball upper half of the zone. Henderson knew it immediately that he let his pitch go by. It's one and one. Andrew right here and the infield got to know, right? At the top of the order, Henderson's a good runner, right? Got to be very clean here if you want to turn double play. Maybe even look backside if necessary. See if that runner at third base is rounding too far. Try to back pick him on a play like that if you're taking too long up the middle. But right here, Andrew's got to attack now. At a 2-1 count, got to get an attack so you can get yourself a ground ball opportunity pitch. 2-1 here on Henderson. Russ to the plate, inside, 3-1. and one. Tigers have set down one of their pitchers. The other one is up and throwing still. Gavin Lones is the one that's still throwing. Looks like he would be the one to be called next when that time comes. Fastball outside, and he walked him loaded. Which it looks like it might be happening right now as Brian McGee will... Coach Brian McGee will be making his way out of the dugout, and that will do it for Andrew Rust. As Gavin Lone as the freshman, will be, put himself in a little bit of a pickle. Let's see if he can get Andrew out of it and this Wittenberg Tigers team when, when we return. Base is loaded. Nobody out. We're in the top of the six. Wittenberg leads 14-5. It's a Tiger call to the bullpen as Gavin Lone will take over when we come back.
Alex Neff back into the batter's box. He'll have an opportunity here with bases loaded. Nobody out here in the top half of the six. Tigers, they lead 14 to five. On the mound, Gavin Lones will take over. Lefty on lefty matchup. Wittenberg going to the lefty right here, the lefty freshman, as we talked about, this Cedarville lineup is loaded with lefties, right? So in the middle of the lineup, going to the lefty, Gavin Lones, the freshman, has thrown three and a third innings, has not given up an earned run yet, two strikeouts as he evens the count right there to make it one and one. But a very talented left-handed pitcher. He also is a two-way. We haven't seen him get an at-bat yet so far this season. But he's been used in pitching situations, and just like right now, in a big one. One and one, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Neff early on the changeup for strike number two. Bases are loaded with nobody out. If any of these runs score, it will not be an earned run against Lonez. It'll go against Andrew Rust. Tommy Anthony, the other freshman, is out in the mound right now in the bullpen just in case. Late and takes it the other way, one and two. Torres on deck. We're in the heart of the order for Cedarville. Could be their best opportunity to try to get back in this game as they trail 14 to five. This game is by no means over, right? Like with this run at the plate right now, if all these guys were to score that on the field, it would make it a five-run game, right? So there's plenty of ball game left still. This one hit on the line, into left field, it's a base hit. One's going to score. They're going to wave around Hale. Here comes Hale to the oh plate. My God. Bad throw gets over Nem Unitas' head. Both runners will advance 90 feet as there to pick it up was Gavin Lones. Great backup by Lones, but it will not stop the runners from advancing another 90 feet. Two runs score, now two are in scoring position for Torres, who stands into the batter's box, still with nobody out. In the top of the sixth. Pardon me for for what I was saying, but Alex Amunitis right there I was, just wasn't lined up directly. Obviously, you always want to line up in front of the guy that you're cutting to, right? So if the throw does go over your head, it goes right to the catcher or whatever base you are throwing it to. Just not lined up directly, so Rocco throws that ball over his head, and there's no one to back it up, and both guys advance, and now you still have two guys in scoring position after two runs to score right there. Nothing in one now as Torres fouls this one back to the backstop. Another lefty-on-lefty -on -lefty matchup. Good piece of hitting right there from Neff, though, hitting a nice line drive backside to score those runs. Fastball high and away, and it's one and one. One and one. Two on in scoring position. Nobody out. Pitch popped up and out of play. Looking more like a football score than a baseball score. 14 to 7. Two touchdowns to one. Luckily for the Tigers, it won't just take one score to make it a one point game after the PAT to tie it. They still have to score seven runs across. One ball, two strikes. Lone has come set. Could be a big out. Here's the pitch. Popped him up. Left side of the infield. McCauley and Nemunitis both. Uh, there, Nem Unitas will make the grab for the first out here in the away half of the sixth. Great. Runners will stay put. Great job by Lonis right there, getting the pop-up, right? We talk about guys on third base with less than two outs. Strikeouts and pop-outs are what you want, right? Because the sack fly would score, but if it's out to the outfield, Lonis doing a good job getting it on the hands to get that pop-up to third base and keep those runs from scoring so far. Runners are on second and third. The pitch popped them up again. This time, shallow right field. Thomas going back. Thomas drifting. Will make the grab. Will run it into the field of play. As Henderson wanted to test it, he will not. Back-to-back -back pop-ups on back-to-back -back pitches from Kevin Lones. And now there are two down in the inning, and the Tigers have a chance to get out of this with very minimal damage as here comes Rotello. A great job getting in on the hands once again by Lones. Phenomenal work. If you are Cedarville, those are two at-bats that you really want back that's going to bite you, right? Anything other than pop-up, right? Anything other than a pop-up scores those runs more than likely. Let's see if Lonis can really limit the damage and get out of this with only those two runs coming in. Tried an inside pitch once more. This time he missed. That's 1-0. and On ball and no strikes. Lonis kicks, deals to the plate, swings right through it. But a foul ball, he did get a piece of it. Lonas, you see attacking these lefties. Lonas is righties. limping as well. You see them attacking 
I think that foul ball just got him yeah, right on Not blown as that was Rotello. Rotello is limping a tad. Foul ball got him right back down on the leg, but um, Lone is doing a great job attacking on the inner half of these hitters, keeping them from getting extended as he was able to get those two pop-ups. And right there, again, attacking on the inner half, getting him to foul it off to even the count at one and one. There's the pitch. Hammers this one down the right field line, and it's foul. Would have been extra bases for Rotello and would have been two RBIs for Cedarville. But it went well foul, and it's one ball, two strikes. Now on the right fielder, Lucas Rotello. Two on, two out. Cedarville has gotten to in the top of the sixth. Lonez looks in, gets his sign, comes set. Kicks, deals, delivers to the plate. Good Strike pitch. three, got him looking. Upper half of the zone, and Gavin Lonez able to arc himself out of a jam with very minimal damage. Cedarville gets two, they strand two. Tigers, they lead by seven as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Parker Griskovich will lead things off as they'll look at a fastball down around the knees for ball one. Jackson Lightcap alongside Dylan Jackson here on the Tiger Sports Network. Bottom of the six, Griskovich. Nice breaker there. And it's one and one. Bottom of the six, 14 to seven. Slider breaks away, two and one. The lights are on. They are shining bright here at Carlton Davidson Stadium, home of the Wittenberg Tigers. Slow roller on the ground. Third baseman bare hands it, fires, and threw it over the head. Griskovich takes a turn. He's going to head to second. This one rolls all the way into the bullpen. Griskovich is going to come to third. The catcher is there, fires all the way to third base. It's cut off by the second baseman. That was Ebling. And... Uh, Parker Griskovich on a ground ball, an errant throw that gets rattled up in the Whit or in the Cedarville bullpen. Griskovich finds himself at third base. The big man looks like to be out of breath. Oh, yeah, you see him huffing and puffing over there, hands on the knees at the long way. That's a good 270 feet from base to base, and that's if you're going in a straight line. That was a long ways to go for Griskovich, and he's been catching all day, you know. But Griskovich always going to hustle. Always going to show good effort, and he gets in there to third base with no outs. As here comes McCulley. McCulley will look at a fastball low in the zone for ball one. It was a tough play by, for the third base. He did a good job barehanding it right, but just got under it a little bit too much, and he threw it away over the first baseman's head. Slider cuts across for strike one, evens it up now one and one. 14 to seven, we're in the bottom of the sixth. There's a pitch, slider outside, two and one. Two 
Two and one. Another slider missing outside, and it's three and one. Three balls and one strike on the shortstop, James McCauley. Fastball low, and McCauley will draw the walk. Back to the top of the order now to Ben Seiber. Got two guys on to start this inning. We talked about answering back innings, right? We gave up two runs that inning. Now you have two guys on base with no outs. Let's see if the Tigers can answer back that inning and get these two guys that are on base into score. And maybe even more with the top of the order coming up behind him. Here comes Ben Seibert. Seibert will look at a fastball in there for strike one on the upper half of the zone. Runners on the corners, nobody out. Cyber Tardy on the fastball, quickly behind, nothing in two. Good spot right there. Deceptive speed coming at it from that angle, right, from that low arm slot, be able to get it to the top of the zone. Tough pitch to hit, down 0-2 now. 0-2, oh, the pitch, slider. Mm. Looks like he got a piece of it. And we're do it again. Good job protecting right there. That's a tough pitch. High and in slider right there. It's hard to even get a piece of that at all. Good job by Ben being able to pull off his best Bee Gees impression, staying alive. Oh, and two. Harris is set. Comes to the plate. Slider got him swinging out in front. Right in that same spot once again. That time, Ben not able to get a piece. But that's just a tough, it's a tough pitch to do anything with. Uh, good spot, back-to-back -back pitches. That one is able to get by Ben Cyber to get the first out of the inning. Here comes Thomas. Luke Thomas will come to the plate. With runners on the corners and one down, Harris fastball paints the outside corner for strike one. Good location right there again from Harris, doing a good job commanding right now. As the first two run, the first runner was on based off of a a little dinker plus the air, and then the walk. This time he's commanding and he's able to get a pop up right here. Thomas pops it up, shallow left field, left fielder coming on, and it is going to bounce. It's going to bounce. It was not caught. McCauley was caught up, and he'll be out at second base. Griskovich will score. It was caught on a short hop. It was not caught through the air. I, I thought he caught it, um, and it looks like Coach McGee and James McCauley think the same thing. Regardless, the run will score, and it'll be a runner on first base, so it's kind of the same thing, and there being an out, regardless either way. Um, McCauley very confused. Either way, there are two outs. Either way, it's the same It's the same scenario regardless. The run would score because Parker Griskovich did tag up from third. Um, there would be a runner on first base, whether it be Luke Thomas and or James McCauley, and it'd be Rock Arroyo up with two outs. So it doesn't really – I don't think that's why Coach McGee kind of just let it go at the end. I think he figured that out. Um, Two down now here in the bottom of the sixth. And we will switch base runners as Luke Thomas now at first base instead of James McCulley. It was caught on a short hop, but it did touch the ground. McCulley did not realize that as he was back on first. They were able to get the force out at second. So in the books, it's a fielder's choice, but Griskovich was able to score as the Tigers back up by eight. Rocco Royer stands in, looks at a breaker, and it's now one ball and two strike as Royer in the box, four for four on the day. Looking for his fifth hit in as many appearances. Fastball upstairs, two and two. We have two down here in the bottom of the six. Two and two. Royer pops it up. Foul ground. Torres 
running. Had room, but can't get there in time. We're doing it again, two and two. Rocco now has seen a decent amount of pitches in this at bat, has seen the the slider, the fastball, has seen all the pitches. So let's see if he can get one of the the timing down on one of them and get another base hit. Two and two. Slider breaks outside. And we've gone full. Thomas will be a motion. With Thomas in motion and Rocco with the ability to put a ball in the gap, that would probably score Luke Thomas. So let's see if Rocco can do such a thing and bring in another run for the Tigers. Three and two. Thomas goes. Fouled back, and Thomas just running rinse sprints out there now. And now LT's thinking, oh, come on, Rocco, just either put it in play or something or get the walk. Don't make me do this over and over again. At least that's what I would be thinking. Luke is probably in better shape than I was, so. 3-2, <laughs> two, we're doing it again to Rocco Royer with two away in the bottom of the sixth. 15-7, to seven, Tigers on top. Thomas goes, slider outside, ball four. Thomas at second, Rocco Royer at first. And here comes Xander Rodriguez. Rodriguez, not his day, he's 0 for 3. Couple of strikeouts for Rodriguez. He did walk back in the second. But still looking for his first hit as he'll stand in. First pitch of the at bat. Fastball left it outside for ball one. We talked about it earlier in the game with Nate Floyd, right? As a sidearm guy with a lefty in the box, you'll see him miss outside, arm side a decent amount just based on not having the same target point with the righty in the box. So let's see if Xander now ahead of the count can take advantage of that and bring in Luke Thomas to score. 1-0, oh, the pitch. Rodriguez fouls it back. Xander spitting in his gloves a little bit, rubbing it out because bat almost slid out of his hands right there. <laughs> so make sure he's getting a good grip on the bat. Don't let that happen. One and one. Bouncer back to the pitcher. Tosses over to Torres, and the side is retired. We're heading to the seventh. Tigers get one. They strand two. 15-7, Wittenberg on top.
Tommy Anthony will take over in the seventh for the Tigers. 15 to seven, Wittenberg leads. As jammed up, first pitch swinging. Grounder over to McCulley, throws to Rodriguez, who snags it for out number one. Quick work for Tommy Anthony here in the top half of the seventh. Anthony comes into this one four and a third innings pitch this year. Opponents batting average 286, his ERA is 623. Good job by Tommy right there. Being efficient, getting the out on the first pitch of his outing. Good play by James McCulley to get out number one. Anthony will kick, deal, deliver, fastball left high. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast a bullpen day for the Wittenberg Tigers. They started the day with Nate Floyd, who went three innings with th two earned runs. Andrew Russ took over as this one hit up the middle. McCulley has it, throws on the run. What a play by James McCulley. Throws it with plenty of time, two up, two set down from James McCauley. Andrew Russ then took over, two innings, four earned runs. Lonas came in, pitched an inning, giving up zero earned runs, only allowing one hit with a strikeout. Now Tommy Anthony takes over, and he's thrown three pitches. Three pitches, two ground outs, pretty efficient. As moving on in the lineup, here comes Depker. Great play right there by James McCulley, moving to his left, throwing it on the run, making it look easy for out number two. Good job by Tommy Anthony, staying low in the zone, getting ground balls and trusting his defense. Swing and a miss. Debker right through on the fastball. One ball and one strike. Winberg has some action again in the bullpen. That's Charlie Schaefer out there. You guys recognize that name. Junior reliever for the Tigers. Swing and a miss. Or found, found it back. Depker did get a piece of it. But it's one and two. One ball, two strikes. Come set. To the plate. Popped him up. Plenty, Foul ground. Plenty Nem of room. Nemunitis called off. McCulley overran it. McCauley oh, no. overran it. He's a little slow to his feet. Looks like he's okay. I don't know if you heard. You could hear Coach McGee yelling out to Rocco, go get that ball, Rocco, obviously, because that's a much easier play for Rocco coming in than it is for either of Alex going back like that and James McCauley coming from that angle. So, obviously, a tough play for any of them in that little spot right there. But regardless, the count's now one and two, and hopefully that doesn't come back to bite the Tigers. One and two, the Tigers looking for their second one, two, three inning in the game, and they got it via the punch out. Depker down with a backwards K, and it's stretch time here in Springfield. 15 to seven, Tigers lead up by eight.
Bottom of the seventh as Alex Nemunitis will lead things off. Back out on the mound, Walker Harris out there for another inning of work. He's been efficient on the mound for Cedarville, the most efficient pitcher that they've sent out there. So efficient that they have not had to have anybody warm up in the pen yet. An offensive explosion for the Tigers. Again, we talk about the struggles that Cedarville has had when it comes to hit batters and uh, walks given up this season. Free bases, they've given up seven walks in this game. They've hit a couple of batters as well. And Unitas will look at a fastball in the inside corner to make it three and one. Winberg, with the 15 runs that they have, they only have 16 hits, which 16 hits is a lot, but when you compare it to just 15 runs, not so much. And it just goes to show you the seven walks, I believe three hit batters in this game. A couple, a couple errors. of errors yeah. by Cedarville. I, I, Cedarville, you clean those stuff up, you're in this ballgame. Not only that, to mention also, like, pass balls that get guys in scoring position that then ended up scoring, right? Like, little stuff like that that don't show up on the stat sheet. Jammed him, out to shortstop, picked up, fires over to Torres. Torres with a pick, got him in time. Nemunitis is down on the 6-3 ground out, and here comes O'Malley. Good play by both sides right there. Good play by Henderson making that play, tough up the middle, and then a good pick by Torres over at first base to finish it. But like we were saying, like just a lot of free bags, right? And free bags are more than just errors, more than just like walks. It's every little thing that it let guys advance an extra 90 feet, little stuff like that will come back to haunt you and score more runs when you're facing a really good team, a really good offensive team as well, like the Winburg Tigers. Here comes O'Malley. As O'Malley will look at a fastball down and in for ball one. We do not know if there is a run rule. Again, run rule, unless it's NCAC play as O'Malley delivers this one into left center field. It'll drop in for a one-out single. O'Malley thought about two. He'll retreat back to first. Nice little tune-up game for O'Malley as he had, like we were saying early on, he had a little case of the Adam, Adam balls early on this week. Uh, three hits so far on the day. Four hits, my apologies. That was his fourth hit right there. So good to see Connor O'Malley get some balls to drop for him. And here comes Matt Moore. Fastball inside corner for a strike, but again, NCAC play is always 10 after 7, but when you get into these out-of-conference games, there is no NCAA rule delegating that there is a run rule. Moore the other way into center field. Diving Oof. attempt. Wow. What a play by Depker. <laughs> Depker is able to make the grab, and O'Malley is going to have to run back with two outs. So before each and every game, the coaches during – they're meeting at home plate, just like any typical baseball game. That is one of the questions that the umpires ask if it's an out-of-conference game is whether or not you want to put a run rule in place. And that is discussed right before the game, whereas most time, I mean, we don't know up here. Yeah, we don't know. And <laughs> it's complete and surprise. And also, like, sometimes, as we mentioned, like, Coach McGee, for example, as we see another delay steal, we talked about. And O'Malley with the steal. How are the Tigers going to steal more bags, right? And you see Coach McGee testing it out here, and you see it's working pretty efficiently as you see how deep the middle infield guys are back, right? So there's no one even really close to cover. But Coach McGee doesn't want to tell the players a lot of the times if there's a run rule or not because he doesn't want that mentality for them going through, right? So if there is one, if the Tigers were able to score two runs in this inning, the game would be over, right? But regardless, um, if not, we got – Couple innings left of this ball game, and the Tigers are still looking to keep on adding on. Two and zero, oh, the pitch outside, make it three and zero. Oh. Also, want to go back to that catch by Depker. What a catch over there in right center, um, laying out to get out number two against Matt Moore. Charlie Schaefer has sat down in the bullpen for the Tigers. Justin Kriller is up and getting loose. Here's a pitch to Grinskovich. Inside, and it's a four-pitch walk with two away, and here comes McCulley. McCulley, he's had a busy day as well on the base paths. McCulley stands in. He is coming to the plate two for two. James McCulley had that. Hard line drive up the middle in that first step. Had to bring in an RBI. 
He had the little dinker over the second baseman's head that brought in another RBI. And he also had a sack fly today, so he's had a very good day. He's made some really good plays defensively as well, so a great day. This is the kind of stuff that you expect to see out of James McCulley, a guy who played a lot as a freshman, right, has had a good season so far, but this is the kind of flashes he can have when he has a game like he has today. And again, we've talked about it. McCulley in the nine hole. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we've said it so many times on this broadcast. Just because you are in the nine hole does not mean that you are the worst hitter on the team, like a lot of people out there may think. Mm -hmm. it, it is a, it, it's essentially another style of leadoff hitter so that they can get on and flip it to yep. the top of the order. Not anyone can be a nine hole hitter, right? Like, it is a role that you want a guy that's going to get on base. And we see James McCulley is one of the only guys that has more walks and strikeouts this year. A guy who can steal bags, a guy who has a good hitter as well. And that James McCulley fits all those qualities. A lot of times, as here's the 1-1 one, one on McCulley, it's inside. A lot of the times, a manager will look at it and say, well, I can only have one batter hit in the leadoff spot. Mm -hmm. And if you have uh, two leadoff batters or three style leadoff batters in your lineup, usually you're put one in the leadoff spot and one in the nine hole yep. mm -hmm. so that they can turn it back up to the top of the order. Because imagine also, like, you have James McCulley, the guy falling behind him today, is Ben Seibert, and we know the speed threat that Ben Seibert is. Imagine you get those two on base with the core hitters that you have, like a Luke Thomas, a Rocco Royers, and a Rodriguez. That's a recipe for success, and McCulley has done a great job flipping the order in the nine hole this season. And, again, like, when the time comes and anything, like, when you have, like, a guy like Luke Thomas is a senior, a guy like Ben Seibert's a junior, McCulley's still a sophomore, right? So by the time he's up there, he's going to be in that leadoff spot as well. Three and one. McCulley up the middle. It's down. It's going to be a base hit. They're going to wave around O'Malley. Here comes the throw to third. O'Malley will score the throw. He is out. O'Malley, the run will count. He did cross the plate before. Yeah, the run, he, the run will score as O'Malley was called safe before Grinskovich was thrown out at oh. third base. Wait, did he? I don't know if he was saying that as waving it off or waving it as safe. He um, did call him safe from my understanding. That's what I believe, that's too. That's what the signal looked like. A lot to clear up, but the Tigers, for now, strike for one. You're watching the Tigers Sports Network here on TKDS. Nine and then back to the top of the order here for the Yellow Jackets. A trail by nine. 16 to seven here in the top half of the eight. Jackson Lycap alongside Dylan Jackson. Has turned out to be a pretty nice night. Warm, cloudy, but the lights are on, shining bright for the first night game of the season at Carlton Davidson Stadium. I don't know what's going on here. Both umpires are now going to get together. I think that manager 
Matt Richter might be inquiring about that run. He said something before the inning started as well. I will say this. I will say this. The run, O'Malley did cross before, like, pretty handily, easily, in my opinion. Um, and it looks like the umpires would agree with me as <laughs> the run will count, and they will have to live with that for the rest of this game. On the mound, here's Anthony. Back for another inning of work as this one is hammered out to center field. Going back, looking up, and making the grab. Just feet before the warning track is Ben Cyber. One up, one down. Anthony has looked magnificent through his uh, inning in the third. A couple of the, the two freshmen that have come in and pitched, right? We saw Gavin Lonis, how well he looked in his inning of work. And now Tommy Anthony doing the same in his innings of work right now. Anthony has retired four, and his pitch count has been... Very low, just 10 pitches. Fastball left high for ball one. Tommy Anthony, the freshman from Canada, I believe Toronto, Canada. I don't have the roster right in front of me to double check, but that's what I believe. But either way, we have uh, we have Tommy Anthony, who's from Canada, and you have Xander Rodriguez, who's from Puerto Rico. So many different backgrounds of players on this Wittenberg baseball team. Fastball taken outside, it's 2-0, and, oh, and that's certainly something great when you know that the game is growing how it is. Found back out of play, 2-1. and one. As we're back to the top of the order, here's Eli Henderson. Eli Henderson's had himself a good day today. He's 2-3, for three, had a double, a bunt for a bunt single early in the game. That double scored two RBIs, I believe, so very good dame, and he's also played some good defense at short. 2-1, and one, the pitch, swing and a miss. Henderson evens it up, two and two. He was tardy on the fastball. That was on the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Freshman Tommy Anthony looking for a punch out. Anthony kicks deals to the plate, found back, and maybe hitting a car, two and two. Never safe when you're at the ball field. I can always catch a foul ball to the windshield. Two and two, Anthony kicks, deals, delivers to the plate, popped him up. McCauley Good calling talk. off uh, Nemunitis. He'll make the grab. Two up, two down. Very good talk right there from both guys because Alex Nemunitis, as a infielder or a player wherever, right, you're calling the ball right, if you can go get the ball, right? But knowing the priorities, you hear James McCauley hearing that he's calling it, so he makes sure he really emphasizes, I got it, I got it, I got it, which then allows no collision for there to get the second out of the inning. Two down, and now here comes Neff. First pitch, Neff swings right through a changeup, nothing in one. Neff so far on the day is one for three. Here's the 0-1, down and in, 1-1. One and one. Finally start to see the lights illuminate off the field. 1-1, one and one. breaking ball, slow roller to first foul, and it's 1-2. and two. Neff again was out in front. Anthony to the plate, the one two, outside two and two. Good spot for the waste pitch. Certainly miss, but when you look at it from a batter's point of view, a tough pitch to lay off. Two and two, two gone, top of the eighth, 16 seven, Tigers lead. The pitch, down and in, we've gone full on Alex Neff. Boston Torres is in the on deck circle. Three and two, the pitch. Hit on a line to right field. O'Malley will pull up the ball cut by him. It's going to run all the way back to the wall. Here comes Neff, round in second. He's heading for third. They're going to hold him there as the ball gets into James McCauley. It was hit, short hop O'Malley. He was undecided on whether or not he wanted to dive for it or not, but nonetheless, the ball got by him, and it will result in Neff 
finding himself at third. And now that'll bring up Boston Torres with a runner 90 feet away and two down. Going to mark a single and an air for their of the day for the Tigers. Slow roller on the ground is second. Play on the lip was Thomas. Throw to Rodriguez, and the side is retired. What an outing for Tommy Anthony. Two innings of one-hit baseball for the freshman. We're heading to the bottom of the eighth. Tigers up by nine. New pitcher for the Yellow Jackets, Levi Correa, will take over for Cedarville. He'll face the top of the order. Ben Seibert to lead things off. Fastball off the edge of the plate, 1-0. Levi Correa is a sophomore out of Minford, Ohio. Big guy sitting at 6'5", weighing at 220. The right-hander has thrown 28 and two-thirds innings in his career so far, coming into today. Fastball low on Seibert, and it is now 2-0. Two balls and no strikes. Corio above the head comes down with it as popped him up. Seibert right side of the infield. And the second baseman, Ebling, will come on to make the grab. Based off of his frame, you see he's a tall, lengthy guy. Has some good velo on him. Looks to be a guy who will throw a splitter as well just based off of his, his picture on the website that they have. Um, but Tommy Chalicki will come in to pinch it right here for Luke Thomas as his day will be done. Tommy Chalicki is a pretty familiar name to you guys as he has made an impact hitting this year, has made an impact pitching this year. The sophomore is a very good young player for this Wittenberg Tigers program. The ultimately utility guy this season. First pitch curveball broke high. He has started games at second base, third base, left field. He has pitched for the team. He has hit in the one hole, the two hole. <laughs> so this is a guy that you'll see a little bit of everywhere when it comes to this Woodenberg team. Breaking ball this time, got it across the plate, one and one. Chaliki, 278 batting average. He's had 54 at-bats. He has one home run and 11 RBIs with a 322 on-base percentage and a 407 
slugging percentage. She'll foul that one back out of play, and it's one and two. Looks like Wittenberg is making some changes throughout as Connor Peer is on deck, the freshman. So it looks like we have some substitutions coming in and out for the Tigers. Here's the one-two on Chaliki. The pitch by Corio. Fastball miss, not by much. But a great eye there by Tommy Chaliki, and it's two and two. Good pitch right there, one-two. Setting up away off the zone just a little bit, seeing if the umpire will give him the call. Two and two. Breaking ball, smoked with it into left field. It's down for a single. Tommy Chalicki showing off, showing off the what we were just talking about, how good of a hitter and player this kid is. As he gets his first hit of the day, going one for one, and his 16th hit of the season. Now coming in is freshman Connor Peer. He will come in to pinch hit for Rocco Royer. As his as Rocco's day is done, as he finishes with a four for four on the stat line. Pierre, one for three on the season. And so pinch hit here in the bottom of the eighth. Opposite field hitting as it's fouled out of play. On top of the pavilion, and now we'll bounce right back into the Cedarville bullpen. Connor Pierce is another young, talented freshman in this freshman class. You've heard all the talent that this freshman class has had, and you've seen it throughout the year so far. Connor Pierre is one for three on the young season so far. This is his fourth plate appearance. Or, you know, one Pierre that. takes it the other way. Right fielder coming on. Mm. We'll make the play. Now we'll hurry it back to first. Chalicki's back there in time before he got doubled up. Good piece of hitting there by Connor Pierre. But just couldn't shake the right fielder as that is Rotella who was able to come on and make the play. And here comes Rodriguez back to the plate. Then we mentioned his last at bat. It has not necessarily been Rodriguez's day. Oh. Yeah, not exactly. Over four so far, but. Don't expect anything less from Xander right here, but great piece of hitting right there from Connor Peer. Just happened to go right at the right fielder, unfortunately, as Xander looks to scratch the hit column today for the first time. Rodriguez did walk back in the second. Here's the pitch. Got away from the catcher. Got away from Shook and advancing. Up a base will be Tommy Chalicki. So now runner in scoring position as Chalicki stands at second. And a 1-1 count on Xander Rodriguez. Nobody in the bullpen right now warming up for the Tigers. Could be possible we see... Tommy Anthony go out there for another inning. We did see Justin Kreller loose up, loosen up in the eighth. On the ground, right through as it was uh, botched by the second baseman. Hard hit ball on the ground there by Rodriguez. The second baseman, Epling, just never got in front of it. Olays the ball and knocked it back to the pitcher. It'll be an E4 as Rodriguez is aboard with two gone, and they're on the corners, and here comes Alex Nemunitis. Nemo one for three on the day so far. That one hit being in that first inning that scratched it and got things rolling for the Tigers with that three-run homer with two outs. Got two guys on with two outs right here again. Let's see if we can see a little bit, have a little bit of deja vu. I mean, Unitas will stand in. Fastball down and away, 1-0. and oh. If there is a run rule in place, all the Tigers need to do is score Tommy Chalicki from third. If there is one. If there's not, we'll have a top of the ninth. 1-0, fastball high, and it's 2-0 on Alex Nemunitis. Connor O'Malley in the on-deck circle. Oh, no. 2-0 now on Alex Nemunitis. Fouled back and out of play. All right, beg your pardon, just fouled back to the backstop. 2-1 on the third baseman. Good swing right there, right on it, right there if you're Nemo. Just a little under. The foul straight back. Two balls and one strike on Alex Nemunitis. With two on, they're on the corners with two gone. Tigers, they lead by nine in the bottom of the eighth. 
Here's the 2-1. Inside corner, taken strike two, two and two. Good spot right there. Good spot, able to get strike two on the inside half. Coriel now seeing if he can get out of the inning without any damage done. Two and two, Coriel comes sent. Rodriguez takes off, no throw. Pitch was high, and it is three and two. Full count, O'Malley stands on deck. Chaliki at third, Rodriguez at second after the air by Eblins. Or Ebling. The 3 2. Popped up. Drifting back. Catcher giving chase. We'll run into the backstop. And the ball caught up in the overhang. We'll do it again 3 and 2. Plenty of baseballs get caught up in the overhang as there's three of them right in front of us right here in the press box. Another one over there. Eventually, the Tigers will get those, make sure they secure those baseballs later on. Three and two on Nemunitis. Three, two. Nemunitis! Delivers one, left field, going back, looking up, and it is off the fence. Run is going to score, two runs are going to score. Nemunitis screws into second. It's a two-run RBI double off the bat of Alex Nemunitis, and the Tigers lead by 11. Great piece of hitting right there from Nemo. Absolute tattooed that ball. Absolutely hit it on a shot, on a line. Almost just had his second home run mm -hmm. of the day. Just over the outstretched hands of the outstretched glove of the left fielder. As Alex gets two more RBIs on the day and gets his second hit. As Connor Malley now comes up looking for his fifth hit. And there's the our answer. No run roll. Yep, no run roll. So we're going to play that top of the ninth inning for sure. So here comes Connor O'Malley. As Nemunitis stands at second base, pitch to O'Malley. Breaker got the outside corner for strike one. Nemunitis has seen the ball great today. He has tattooed him a couple of times. He had that three-run home run in his first at-bat back in the first. Able to get that two-run double off the top of the fence. O'Malley, another ball that will be caught up in the overhang. Right next to the last one that Nemunitis hit. And it's nothing and two on Connor O'Malley, the right fielder. Those two runs brought in also by Nemunitis also makes it so the Tigers have scored in every single inning but one inning throughout this game. So very good offensive performance from the Tigers. An inning they did not score in was the fifth. And O'Malley, fly ball, shallow left field. Coming on is Hale. Hale will grab it. And we're going to the ninth. The Tigers, they lead by 11. Ninth inning. Upcoming here at Carlton Davidson Stadium as the Tigers looking to get back to 500 on the year.
Tommy Anthony is still out there for the Tigers. He'll look for inning number three as we are in the ninth. Saw them all fouled off. Ebling stands into the plate. Ebling on the day is 0 for 3. He was hit by a pitch as well earlier in the game. Here is the 0-1. Breaking ball just outside, 1-1. One one. Justin Kreller warming up in the Wittenberg bullpen. One and one, Anthony kicks, deals to the plate. Foul ball. Tigers looking to get back to 500. A win in this one will even up their record at 12 and 12. Here's pitch, swing and a miss. Got him swinging. As Epling's down via the punch outs. Anthony gets his second strikeout of the evening. And now here comes Rotello to the plate. Lucas Rotello, the right fielder, stands in. At Cedarville, they trail by 11, and they are down to their final couple of outs. Rotello rolls over on it. Scooped up, fires to Rodriguez. Chalicki to Rodriguez, two down, and Cedarville down to their final out here in the top half of the ninth, and it all comes down to Colley. Good job by Tommy Anthony getting those two outs right there, see if he can finish this game out, and finish a fantastic outing from himself as well. Um, there's a couple of changes out there as well. Let's make sure we talk about those. You got Thatcher Dietz, number 10, catching. You have Josh Bobe out in left field, Cam Glenn out in center, Brayton Pfeffers in right field, and Tommy Chalicki at second base, who just made that play for the second out of the inning. A lot of substitutions were made at the start of the ninth. Dylan went during the break and was able to get all those substitutions. Oh, and one. Here is the pitch. Fastball misses just low. Good spot right there. Just missed, as you said. How about Anthony today? Two and two thirds of an inning. One hit allowed. Two strikeouts. His pitch count's only at 28. Make that now 29 as it's popped up and out of play. One and two as the Yellow Jackets are down to their final out. Very efficient day for Tommy Anthony. Very good day for the freshman. And another really good day for the other freshman that came in to pitch in Gavin Lonas. Been a great performance by the Tigers all around as we look to finish this off on this pitch right here. One and two. Check swing. Just outside. Remains two and two. We're due... 2-2 here to Colley. Tigers one strike away from getting back to 500 on the year. Could be a huge confidence boost. Anthony kicks, deals, delivers, strike three. Got him looking. And the Wittenberg Tigers are back to 500 after an 18-7 offensive explosion victory over the Cedarville Yellow Jackets. Just a great, great day for the Tigers um, on a beautiful night, as we said, mid-60s all day. Great day for some baseball. The Tigers are scheduled to be back here tomorrow as they will go on to face Bluffton, I believe. Um, but with that being said, the Tigers inc improved the record to 12-12 and 12 in the season, right back to 500. Let's take a look at the box score. It all got going in the bottom of the first when Alex Nemunitis hit the only home run that we saw in the game. It was a three-run shot in the bottom of the first. Winberg took a 3-0 lead, tacked on two more in the bottom of the second to take a 5-0 lead. Cedarville got one in the top of the third. Wittenberg, seven in the bottom of the third. Took a 12-1 lead. Cedarville got four in the top of the fourth. Wittenberg got two. Both teams held scoreless in the fifth. Cedarville, two in the sixth. Wittenberg, one in the sixth. Wittenberg, one in the seventh, two in the eighth. That tallies up. Wittenberg, 18 runs, 20 hits, four errors. Cedarville, seven runs, nine hits, and three airs. And uh, again, a bullpen day for the Tigers turns into a very efficient, especially in the back half of the game, with a lot of their freshman pitchers coming in, throwing some great innings, such as Gavin Lones and Tommy Anthony. Oh, yeah. Great performances on the mound by the young guys. Nate Floyd had a very good outing in his short work. Andrew Russ looked good as well. On the offensive end, Rock Royer with four hits, two RBIs. Connor O'Malley had four hits. Ben Saber with three. James McCauley with three hits, four RBIs. 
Alex Aminanis went two for four with five RBIs. Parker Griskovich with two hits. I can keep on going on and on, but just a great game for the Tigers as they look to keep this momentum going for the rest of this week and then back this weekend into conference play. Tigers are back in action tomorrow again, weather permitting. First pitch scheduled for 6 o'clock against Bluffton. Alongside Dylan Jackson, our producer Cliff, our executive producer Kevin Fowler, and everybody from the entire Tiger Sports Network crew and TKDS Sports Network crew, I'm Jackson Lycap. We'll be back tomorrow live about 10 minutes before first pitch at 5.50. Until then, we hope everybody has a good night as the Wittenberg Tigers 